Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a bit unique in that it's a compilation of the last four videos. This is the director's cut of the full Roblox Iceberg series, which you probably already know of. In this video, I'm just going to combine the last four videos into one full length movie, along with giving extra commentary on things like correcting entries, adding more insight, etc. I hope you guys enjoyed enough to give it another watch, and if you're new here, then you're in for a treat. Now I don't want to waste your guys' time anymore, so let's get into it, starting with part one. A wise man once said, I don't think I'm gonna make another iceberg video. A wiser man said, never trust a YouTuber. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be making any more iceberg videos cause you know, the trend is kind of dying out and I felt that I covered everything I wanted to cover. That was until I saw this beast. I got a lot of requests to cover this iceberg or to cover the contents in it. And since we destroyed 15,000 subscribers in a month, I think you guys deserve this. This thing covers practically every concept known to Roblox, so if you're one of my viewers who knows nothing about the platform, this will be an apt introduction to all it has to offer. For the sake of time, sanity, and my computer, I will be uploading this video in four parts. Also, I will be skipping entries I talked about in previous videos, so be sure to watch my other videos if you saw an interesting entry that I missed before you complain in the comments. Also, I'm going to be skipping any myth entries or entries that I think are just downright stupid. Fair warning, I'm definitely going to get stuff wrong, because although I've been playing Roblox on and off for some 10 odd years, I'd be lying if I said I was always a huge part of the community. Also, I'm going to skip topics that I just don't think are interesting enough for the video, like only the most boring of boring topics, for your sake and mine. Thanks to Forkoy, Lewis, and many other members of my Discord for help with this iceberg. Without them, I doubt I'd be making this video in all honesty. Oh, I'm going to take the advice of one of my comments now and shut up so we can get along with the video. Let's begin with the tip of the iceberg. If you've ever played pretty much any online multiplayer platform, you've probably already been made familiar with the expression noob. It's no different with Roblox. In fact, through Roblox was my very first exposure to the term. Noob is just an internet slang term for new player. In Roblox, noobs have a general look, characterized by the yellow body with the blue torso. This is probably the most popular imagery associated with the term noob. Fun fact about this part, I had to blur a few of the pictures while looking through the Google image results for noob because there was like weird on the front page. I didn't even notice it until people started pointing it out to me in the DMs. Awkward. As Roblox updated their default avatars, however, technically what a noob is in-game has changed. But I think everyone's going to remember the classic yellow dude as the one and only true noob. Cafe groups slash games are places that people gather to roleplay while going to a cafe. These include groups like Frap, which actually landed in hot water for copyright, Sizzle, Panda Express, and many more. These games have a history of being trolled and raided, I've done it before myself since it's kind of gamer nature to disrupt people trying to do serious roleplay. I gotta put you in here. I gotta put you in this guy's... Put you in the window. As of recent, many of these cafes, which were named after real companies, have had to change their names and branding because of Roblox cracking down more and more on copyright. Groups in Roblox have a group wall function, one of the few places still alive on the Roblox website where you can actually still post public messages. Ever since its creation, these group walls have been spanned with unnecessary messages, advertising free robux or hacks, or posting some scary chain message or something dumb like that, or just somebody chatting in annoying multi-messages. Roblox has a pretty active myth community, although it's been less active in recent times. Essentially, Roblox myths are like creepypastas that get shared around the community, except some of these myths kind of have the air of, maybe it's real? There's a community of myth hunters, or those who try to uncover evidence of these myths slash look deeper into them. Some examples of this are 1x1x1x1, Guest666, and Gauze. The myth community is super huge though, so I will definitely have to cover it fully in a later video. UGC stands for User Generated Content, and these are basically items like accessories or models created by select Roblox users rather than Roblox admins themselves. 
Over the years, Roblox has allowed more and more of these onto the marketplace, especially in recent years. In fact, a majority of clothing and stuff you see on characters nowadays are UGC items. A very popular UGC item creator is Reverse Polarity, whom I discussed in my previous two videos and who follows me on Twitter. He made this Super Saiyan hair, which was a cancelled UGC item, just in case that's what the creator was referring to. Listen, if you've had a Roblox account for any amount of time, you've seen these. Literally, there are so many ways scam bots will try to get you to click links and gain your personal information, I'm not even going to go through them. I have seen actual scam bots joining games as of recent, which is really annoying, but what are you going to do? Builders Club was Roblox's premium subscription program. You basically paid a monthly fee to get certain benefits that free users didn't get, mainly a certain amount of Robux every month, among other things. It had three tiers, Builders Club, Turbo Builders Club, and Outrageous Builders Club. Back in my day, I had TBC for a while, I think, thanks to stealing my parents' credit card. It's a credit card, and I'm going to be buying 400 Robux for this card. Now, she said I can only buy one. But I'm gonna buy some more. Now it's just been replaced with a standard premium Roblox kind of deal. Basically, the Roblox Video Stars program is a partner program famous Roblox YouTubers can do with Roblox. If you have over 100,000 subs and 10 million Roblox related views, you can sign up. And Roblox basically signal boosts your videos and gives you early access to events and stuff like that. Who knows, maybe one day I'll be able to join. If Roblox hasn't blacklisted me already, which would not be surprising in the slightest. Fake hackers are just basic exploiters who try to trick little kids into thinking they're the second coming of 1x1x1x1 or cool kid or something. It's really not that hard to buy a cheap exploiting script and make yourself fly around in a random game or something. But it's usually enough to trick the younger player base. Why does everything including personal servers have to be Builders Club only? Into thinking you have the ability to do any serious damage to Roblox as a platform. Flamingo Fan Club is a Roblox fan group based around popular Roblox YouTuber Flamingo. It has over 5 million members, making it one of Roblox's most popular groups. Of course, with this popularity comes a lot of drama and toxicity, since it's basically Roblox Forums 2.0. Griefers are just people on Roblox who want to disrupt serious gameplay in really any Roblox game. There are many ways to grief, but it should not be confused with exploiting or cheating. Griefers don't hack or exploit, and unlike cheaters, they don't want to win, only to cause pain to other players. I think most people who have played Roblox for a long time have gone through or are going through a griefing phase, as did I, but it gets boring pretty quickly. This guy. Th that's all I need to say. This dude. Wait, wait, wait. Look at this! You guys are, look at me! What is going on? Just wanted to clarify that this guy obviously wasn't who the Iceberg creators were thinking about when adding this entry. He's not necessarily a clickbait YouTuber, just a bad one. To get better examples of clickbait YouTubers, just literally search up Roblox 1x1x1x1. Sometime in 2018, screenshots of a dev forum post were floating around, claiming that Roblox was going to remove the classic R6 models, and that Roblox was switching to an 18 plus model. Of course, they were just doctored screenshots, something anyone can make with some good ol' inspect element, but it was good enough to where lots of kids bought it. Make sure to fact check before believing things like that. Some games exist solely for the purpose of stealing your personal information. A common tactic for some phishing games would have, once you joined, a fake maintenance window pop up on your screen, asking for you to log in. If you did enter in your details, whoever created the game would now have your account information stored, and you would have nothing to show for it. It goes without saying, but never enter in your login information unless you're sure you are on the official Roblox page. Often, if I'm not sure, I will enter in fake information, and usually after that, the fake login will show its true colors, although it doesn't always work. Stay safe, kids. Back when forums were a thing, it would be an all-too-common occurrence to have them raided. 
Essentially what a forum raid is, is it's having a large group of people spam the forums with all sorts of messages so that those who want to have normal conversations would have their messages flooded with all kinds of troll posts. This mainly occurred between the two subforum factions, RT, Roblox Talk, and OT, Off Topic. These two subforums would often raid each other because for whatever reason they just had beef. Of course the most popular forum raid was probably the Quackity Raid, but I already talked about that extensively in my other iceberg video. Skyblock is a game on Roblox where you manage various floating islands in the sky. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now if you haven't played the game, you're probably thinking, wow, that sounds a lot like Minecraft Skyblock. Well, Minecraft thought that too. I need to clarify, Minecraft slash Mojang didn't sue, as they didn't actually own the Skyblock mod or the idea. It was the creators of the Skyblock mod who gave this game a hard time. Due to the name alone, Skyblock ran into lots of copyright issues. They had to change their name to Skyblocks and then to Roblox Islands, and in June the game was taken down entirely. It's now up under the name Islands, and fortunately we were able to avoid another Brick Brawn situation. Developer events are events that are held inside already created games, rather than games being custom made for events. For example, the Egg Hunt yearly event switched from being an original Roblox event to being a dev event, scattering the eggs across popular developer created games. People didn't like this format for a variety of reasons, mainly that it was just more boring this way and it clearly took a lot less effort. And when Roblox stopped paying developers that their eggs were featured in, the criticism only got worse. Ah, oh, this entry fills me with nostalgia. Online daters are people who go to Roblox to have online relationships. They have been a staple of the Roblox community for years, being generally disliked among the community. They were, and still are, pretty cringy. It's always pretty easy to tell them apart from other players based on appearance alone. In the past, Odeers abused the Roblox 2.0 body and often wore quote unquote trendy clothing. Nowadays they wear R15, although normal players use R15 as well, and often go ham on the e-girl slash e-boy clothing. They are closely tied with the TikTok community as well, which I will talk about a bit later. JJSploit is an exploit software that has persisted throughout all of Roblox's security patches. It is an extremely popular exploit, yet it's not been patched. I don't know much about exploits, so I'm sure the comments will explain it in further detail, but it essentially allows you to have things like auto-aim in Arsenal or speed hacks in other games. Some people claim it has a virus hidden in it, meaning that if you download it, the creator will have full access to your computer. The creators claim it's safe, but who knows. Honestly, if you have to resort to cheating in Arsenal, you suck. So just stay away from this kind of thing, just to be safe. Cow Cow Man Man Thingit, or Cow Cow for short, was Roblox YouTuber Green Lego Cats 123's alt account. He mainly used this account to troll. Some people thought it was funny, some people thought it wasn't, but it wouldn't matter as the account would get banned in June of 2017. The admin cited exploiting as the reason, but Lego Cats did not believe this as he never exploited. The only video which had evidence pointing to him exploiting was a video in which typical modders exploited and gave his account admin permissions. Lego Cats came up with a theory as to why he was really banned. Alex Neutron, the owner of Meep City. Alex Neutron and Green Lego Cats had beef, a lot of beef, which basically boils down to Lego Cats dislikes Meep City. Understandable. Soon after their beef, Cow Cow was banned. The prevailing theory was that Alex Neutron used his high status in the community and as a Roblox intern to get the admins to ban Cow Cow for revenge. Whether or not he was actually banned for exploiting or something much deeper is still widely up to debate. When guests were still a thing, each guest had a number assigned to them. I assume it's either completely random or based off of how many guests were there before you. I don't know. But that means that there's a guest one. The first guest. I guess you'd freak out if you saw him in your game. I don't know. Roblox is an old platform that has gone through many clients in its lifetime. You can talk to many people who have fond memories of playing Roblox as early as 2006, but the issue this entry deals with is Roblox's strong aversion to actually archiving old clients. Due to this, the actual classic clients which were used to run Roblox in 2006 to 2007 are completely lost to time, becoming its own sort of lost media. Lost Media Iceberg! 
There have been plenty of attempts to recreate and replicate the old client, but the official one has yet to be released, with no statement from the creators as to whether or not they have any plans to release it. You'll see mention of this later, but not too long after this video was uploaded, the March 2007 official client was actually found. So it just goes to show how fast the Roblox community can move. Guest 1337 was, well, not literally a guest, but technically they were a normal Roblox player. They were a guest activist, I guess. He protested on forums and in games for the fair treatment of guests. He argued that they were given a negative reputation for no reason and deserved the same rights normal players did. He was really vague about what the rights were, but whatever. He created a protest game that got 2 million visits in less than a month, so it's safe to say his message did get around. He was banned multiple times for spamming and was accused of exploiting as well. On February 11th of 2014, his account was deleted for good and his activism for guest rights was put to an end. Not long after, guests were removed entirely, so I guess guest1337 never really got what he wanted. Just like the name suggests, spam models are free to take models, decals, meshes, and sometimes audios that are copied and uploaded over and over again into the library in hopes that the player will just take one since there are so many. Oftentimes though, these models have malicious Lua viruses that can take over games and severely limit progress in game creation. Ribbonsim is a very well-known Roblox commentary YouTuber, known at the time mainly for his Roblox Watch series. It took a look at various events in the Roblox community and criticized them through a satirical lens. Well, the majority of his, like most other Robloxians' criticism, was towards the moderation team. Because oftentimes mods just Look suck. at this dude! That's something that even implies outside of just Roblox moderation. Well, all the criticism of mods never went over well with said mods, and so Ruben's accounts started dropping like flies. One after another, Ruben's accounts were being banned for no good reason. This came to a head when Ruben made a video calling out Noble Dragon for following an NSFW furry account on his main Roblox Twitter. After this, any Ruben Sim account wouldn't last very long, and even mentioning Ruben Sim could get your account banned. Even his girlfriend's account was banned. It's a blatant abuse of power, but, you know, mods will be mods, I guess. A.Wave, uh, or better known to you guys on the internet as OOF, is the classic death sound that plays whenever you drop to zero health in a Roblox game. But not a lot of people know where this sound originates from. That's right, it's not an original sound, but the sound is actually taken from the 2000 game End of Messiah. Uh, the game is just called Messiah. The clip is from the end of the game, so it's listed on YouTube as End of Messiah. Yeah, my bad on that one. Low-key though, I think End of Messiah is a sick name. Just recently, some legal issues propped up because of this, because, as it turns out, Roblox didn't pay for the sound or credit the original sound creator, Tommy Tallarico. Despite this, Tallarico said he was honored to have the sound featured in the game and asked for minor compensation. He ended up asking for a really small amount of money. Still, Roblox didn't want to pay to keep up the legendary sound in their game, instead opting to remove the sound entirely unless you pay Robux to include it in your games. Rest in peace, little buddy. We're gonna miss you. actually couldn't find any information on this entry. I can only assume somebody managed to steal this roleplay, or the roleplay itself was actually a stolen game, similar to the Stickmaster Luke stolen games. I don't know, help me in the comments. This entry was never really figured out, but MLPFIM stands for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, a popular kids show. Apparently the models might have been stolen from another game and the game got taken down or something, still not sure. Limiteds in Roblox are specific items that have a limited amount. This means that, naturally, an economy would form around these limited items. People buy and sell a variety of limiteds for wildly diverse amounts of Robux for a variety of reasons. I even have a few limiteds myself. It goes without saying that the less of a certain type of limited there are, the higher the price would be of that limited, and that does indeed ring very true for Roblox's limiteds. There are some limiteds that only one player in the entire world owns, because there was only one created. And there are some limiteds that are literally priceless. 
Yes, these limiteds are unobtainable because the accounts that had them were banned, and Roblox did nothing to distribute them. A good example of these are a few of the Roblox tablets. Some of the owners of those tablets' accounts were deleted, meaning that they couldn't sell the tablets even if they wanted to. So unless Roblox gets involved directly and redistributes the tablets, which so far they haven't, these relics will be frozen in time, unable to move hands for all of Roblox's lifespan. Again, I could find no information on this, but I can assume that some older Roblox clients pinged what's called a false positive on certain antiviruses, meaning that those antiviruses flagged it as a virus. This might lead people to believe that Roblox was a virus, but it's more often than not that it just detected some stray code that could be considered a virus. Roblox's moderation system makes it so that not safe for work audios or images don't get posted onto the catalog or put in games, but some creators have found ways to actually bypass the auto moderation. Essentially, they corrupt an image slash audio file so it becomes unreadable through Roblox's auto moderation techniques and then place the NSFW audio or image on top of that, allowing it to bypass Roblox's moderation completely. It's an interesting method that leads to a lot of images and audios being in games where they really shouldn't be. Now I'm sure you know what TikTok is. At this point, it's been around for over two years now and has seen the rise and fall of many unique communities. One of those communities is, of course, the, the Roblox community. The Roblox TikTok community combines Roblox with the popular trends of TikTok, specifically the dress trends, meaning you're going to be seeing lots of Roblox e-boys and e-girls, uh, unfortunately. Can't wait until we make some more food at home. Our thoughts were kind of a trend from 2017 to 2018 where people, mainly girls, would dress up their avatars very realistically, creating this really uncanny effect. They took their inspiration from people like Nicki Minaj, Ariana Grande, and various drag queens, and it's very easy to see. They were often made fun of by users like Ruben Sim and Cow Cow because they were heavily affiliated with online dating and the quote-unquote Roblox gangster community. Yeah, I know. I don't think anything on this iceberg could fill me with as much rage as this entry did. As a brand, Roblox is spelled with a capital R and all other lowercase letters. Still, there was a time when Roblox went by ROBLOX in all caps. I always remember it being ROBLOX in all caps. It's even that way in my bookmarks. But at some point, maybe it was always this way, they switched to a normal proper noun format for their brand name. But this has not been covered up completely. People have done digging and found many instances where Roblox officially went out of their way to use all caps when referring to the website. Instances that are still around to this day. Um, it's very interesting and I wonder why they made the switch. War clans are certain military themed groups on Roblox. There are a lot of them, all with different agendas, but they are all themed around, well, war. They often have battles and wars, and many of them are plagued with toxicity and abuse. Really, this entry deserves a full video at some point. Experimental mode was a weird feature Roblox added in September of 2017. Apparently, it was an optional setting for user-made games that essentially allowed other players to potentially add their own scripts to games that they didn't own, making games with this feature extremely vulnerable to harmful exploits. Additionally, it was criticized by the community for having harsh regulations. Nobody could join games that didn't have filtering enabled on now unless they were friends with the game creator. This caused every classic game to be unplayable because they didn't have filter enable activated and those games couldn't add it because it would break the scripts. After only one week, Roblox basically discontinued the feature entirely, which was definitely for the best. Back to the very common topic of uncanny Roblox avatars, virtual K-pop groups are what happens when Unfortunately, you combine Roblox and K-pop, which was probably inevitable. This one's actually really interesting. A group of Robloxians decided to form their own K-pop group in Roblox. ZTS was a fully functioning Roblox K-pop group that would go on actual music tours 
and they looked like... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty disgusting, but an interesting attempt nonetheless, so it has a bit of my respect. Back on the Roblox forums, there used to be rumor that, supposedly, the staff had created a hat for some sort of 9-11 memorial event. This was only a rumor, and there's no evidence that this was real. But if it was, then it's most likely that Roblox didn't release it because it would have been seen as distasteful. Divine Sister is a Roblox group created by Valindra, who are known for a lot of things, but for one, they are one of the largest LGBT groups on Roblox. Divine Sister has come under a lot of criticism over the past few years for a variety of reasons, mainly because of the content they choose to show. Divine Sister is a group aimed towards mainly younger children, yet features an abundance of NSFW imagery and topics, such as sexual content and cult behavior. This group is very controversial and has had their games taken down multiple times. For a full breakdown of the Divine Sister situation, I suggest you watch Some Ordinary Gamers video on the topic. The Streets is Roblox's equivalent to a dark RP, but it takes place in the urban ghetto. It's an interesting thing to get into, but not scary, unless you this count the, the horrors of low-income neighborhoods. I'm walking in the kitchen in this mall, uh, Look at this shit, man. That's why it was all the more scary and mysterious when players began to see a ghost appear at random spots around the city at night. At first, players didn't believe it was real, but there have actually been various recorded sightings, and it's clear to see that this was some easter egg, probably for Halloween. Finobe or Finope uh, is a website that emulates classic Roblox, and it currently has the 2012 through 2016 clients. It is one of the most popular classic Roblox emulation sites, but has gone through a lot of controversy with plenty of drama in the community and issues with the client. It does not even compare to the dumpster fire I will discuss next, though. Energy Cell is the creator of Graphictoria, a platform similar to Finobe, which was meant to emulate classic Roblox. Now that's all well and good, but Energy Cell and Graphictoria's existence was extremely controversial. It begins with RBLX Dev, which was an early platform meant to emulate classic Roblox. Energy Cell filed a claim to take that website down, claiming falsely that it was a phishing website. Not only did he do this, but he also stole code from RBLX Dev. This is only the very beginning of the controversy though, because the actual Graphictoria application did some very shady things. Upon installing Graphictoria, it would disable your antivirus so that it would not flag it. The application would log private information such as IP, hardware ID, and emails, and store it so that Energy Cell had access to all of it. Of course, this in itself is a bit fishy, but Energy Cell definitely used it to its full potential, leaking the private information of pretty much everyone he didn't like. If you signed up for Graphictoria, your information was screwed. Energy Cell often used this information to blackmail people into staying on the admin team, and if you left, you probably were going to have your IP leak. Additionally, Energy Cell made two fake personas, claiming to be his sister and his girlfriend. On these accounts, yes, even on the sister account, he would post sexual messages directed toward himself under the guise of being the female accounts, as well as make sexual comments back. These were on public Discord servers for children. He also used one of the accounts to catfish an underage boy into sending a picture of his soul which Energy Cell proceeded to mock and spread around. This is still not even close to covering the entire story, so if you want a full breakdown, please watch this video that covers the entire situation. Energy Cell, please stop muting me. What happened after this video was probably the wildest thing that has ever come out of this iceberg. Soon after releasing this video, I was harassed by Energy Cell and a couple of his fans before being blocked by him. It was all a bit bizarre. Either way, they claim that Graphictoria never disabled your antivirus. Multiple people have claimed it did, so I'm not sure which is right in that regard, but don't let that discrepancy undermine the rest of this dumpster fire, however. Energy Cell is a weird guy. Energy Cell, I really love you. Energy cell, let me play my song. No, you don't like my stupid song.
Now, due to how Roblox works, games that were created long, long ago can still be played and don't get automatically deleted after a certain amount of time or anything like that. There are still plenty of games from as early as 2007 that you can still play to this day, but are completely empty. Joining these games is now an eerie experience as you walk around the long forgotten maps. Although you're by yourself in these abandoned games, it doesn't always feel like it. Many people wonder why this is. Flamingo, who I've already discussed previously, is very well known for his myth videos, where he goes into various myth games and investigates them. This entry is the theory that myth creators pay him to view their myth games so that their myths gain popularity. I mean, it makes sense. Flamingo has millions of subscribers and his myth videos rack up millions of views, so it would only make sense that if your game was featured in one of his videos, it would gain a lot of attention, which is really all myth creators want. Whether or not this is 100% true, of course, we will probably never know. Even if myth creators aren't paying him directly, those videos do get him a lot of views, so in a way it's an indirect transaction if you know what I mean but it might not be anything real. After I uploaded this video, Flamingo and a couple of his friends commented. They made it pretty clear that Flamingo doesn't get paid to make any of his myth videos, and I believe it 100%. The incentive that myth videos get him a lot of views is, I'm sure, more than enough for Flamingo to create videos. He doesn't have to get paid to make them. Shout out to Flamingo though, now it's confirmed that he knows I exist. Now we're moving on to the second part in the series. This one was the only part where I got to do a collab, which was with Yoshimi. He's a real cool dude, as you'll soon find out. Ah, you're back for part two. Good to see you again. Let's do a quick recap. In the last video, we covered layers one and two of the full Roblox iceberg, and today we will be covering the third layer. Now, this layer is pretty hefty, and I'm going to need some help. So joining us today will be Yoshimi. Hey guys, it's Yoshimi. I just want to give thanks to Toasty for having me be a part of this collab. I really enjoy his content, and it is awesome to be able to help cover this behemoth of an iceberg for you guys to watch. If you guys don't know, Yoshimi covered a different Roblox iceberg long before I did. But he also, you know, does other stuff. Aside from Roblox content, I also like to cover obscure slash lost media, internet mysteries, and music releases I enjoy. So if any of that sounds interesting, then please feel free to check out my channel after this video. If you like creepy content, you should definitely check out his channel. And if you like my stuff, you should definitely check out his Exploring Spooky Roblox Places series. By the way, this isn't even a collab plug, I just genuinely enjoy his stuff. Well, without further ado, let's jump into part 2 of the full Roblox iceberg. After extensive research, we believe that this entry is in reference to Survive the Killers, Kill House Mode, a mode in which you could practice with various weapons on a shooting range. Very basic. Turns out we were straight up wrong on this one. Survive the Killers is a completely different game, and that game had a practice room where there was actually a ghost that would just sit out of bounds. That's about it. Austin Rochele, better known as Nimbles, was a Roblox game developer. They're well known for making games like Egg and Wait for 4 Hours to Leave a Room. On May 17th, 2020, Nimbles passed away at the age of 21. At first, nobody knew why. Their family requested that their cause of death remained private. But on May 31st, 2020, Nimbles' Twitter account posted a scheduled tweet linking to a now-deleted secret tagged GitHub post named goodnight.rbxl, which read the following. If you're reading this, I've probably been missing for two weeks. I'm not alive anymore. On May 17th, 2020, I took my own life. You're the best thing that has ever happened to me. Thank you for being with me. The support and love and friends I've made have kept me going as long as I have. I definitely wouldn't be writing this if you weren't here for me. I wanted to keep going until I finished all my projects, but I won't ever be finished with them. Haha. <laughs> my work is one of the few things I can find joy in, and I'm glad I was able to share it with you. I'm sorry if you expected something more personal. I didn't write any personal letters. That's a lot of writing, and everyone would be similar to this. Good night. Nimbles, May 17th, 2020. Rest in peace, Nimbles. You left us too soon. If you're ever feeling depressed, ending your life is never the answer. Please talk to a friend or call your area's suicide hotline. In 2007, Roblox ran a contest where three judges watched a variety of funny Roblox YouTube videos. Whichever video won would get a custom hat designed for them as well as 1,000 Robux. The video Roblox Gone Crazy by JJ5X5 was crowned the victor, and they got a white top hat made for their achievement. 
This hat now goes for around 80,000 Robux nowadays. Little Angels Daycare is a seemingly innocent roleplay game where you can do things like attend school, raise children, and hang out. The game is extremely popular with over 30 million place visits. Little do the large majority of users know, this game had a dark secret buried beneath the surface. One day in 2017, an exploiter, supposedly typical modders, discovered that there were a series of rooms deep below the playable area that could only be reached through noclip hacks. First, there is the rather innocuous newsroom, but below that lies a... nutshack room. And then below that lies a room with six small jails, some pentagrams, and an Illuminati symbol. This was a fully blown satanic ritual room. Now I could continue to keep the air of mystery and general spookiness around this entry by saying, ooh, the creator of LAD is a satanist, but in reality it's just a joke room. Kind of a weird joke considering it could jeopardize the thing that is most likely making you a lot of money, but oh well. Believe it or not, Roblox was not always marketed as the little kids game you know it as today. It used to be marketed towards younger teenagers, but around 2010, they shifted their marketing towards younger children, like 6 to 8 years old, by making building tools easier to use and making the graphics a lot brighter and more colorful. This was most likely just because they were beginning to get sponsorships from companies also marketed towards younger children, so it was generally a lot easier to just shift their demographic, and it made a lot more sense. The Great Strategy, or the 2006 Roblox theme song, was a song made by Bad Liz, a Finnish musical composer. It went on to be featured in the game trailer for Roblox in 2006, making it the OG or original song by many as it was released one month after Roblox release into the gaming genre. The song can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, and Tidal, as well as YouTube itself. Roblox Rally was the very first Roblox convention. It took place in the Palace of the Fine Arts in San Francisco on August 1st. From what I can tell, it went pretty well. They discussed future updates coming to Roblox and had various Q&A sessions, along with giving out rewards to players. There were no more Roblox rallies after this event, making it a one-of-a-kind experience if you managed to get there. Egg Drops were Roblox's very first attempts at making Easter Egg Hunt events. Egg Drops took place on Easter and the week after every year from 2008 to 2010. 2009 featured no official egg drop. What it would be is random eggs all falling from the sky of any game where the creator enabled egg drops. The eggs were all available to pick up, and as soon as you did, it would appear in your inventory as a hat. If you had a free-to-play account, you could pick up a maximum of six unique eggs. If you had Builders Club though, you were given the egg basket gear item that enabled you to pick up as many eggs as you wanted. It was an interesting idea, but players wised up, creating games specifically for egg drops called Egg Funnels. These games were gigantic funnels that covered the entire base plate that would collect all the eggs and funnel them into the center of the map so non-Builders Club members could avoid accidentally collecting eggs they didn't want and pick and choose from the contents of the pile. The creation of these funnels actually caused the admins to retire the egg drops idea entirely and come up with egg hunts so that players would actually have to work for their eggs. MSC6 was a super moderator on Roblox and is generally considered to be one of the most hated moderators on the platform. Many people disliked her for how much she abused her power and platform, banning anyone for saying anything she deemed to be out of line. Some people even thought she was a bot at some points. Even Master Chief Alpha, one of her co-workers, joked that MSC6 is actually a highly advanced search and destroy cyborg. Now from what I know, Vaccine Script seems to be referring to a Lua virus that has been circulating since 2010 that copies the host script and pastes it into every part of the game's workspace, which might cause lag in some games. This is one of those malicious scripts that you find in free models, so be careful. Sorry guys, looks like we have another entry on the Lost Media Iceberg. In terms of Roblox, we couldn't find anything on Temple of the Zombie besides a single post by a user named Reverse Builder asking about it and mentioning user Namiko Namiko. Now, researching Namiko Namiko brings up nothing but deprecated posts about a certain Roblox iceberg. Was it the same Roblox iceberg? I don't think so, because the comments describe an iceberg that doesn't quite match up with ours. But still, this whole situation just leaves me scratching my head. So, Namiko Namiko actually found this video and helped us out with this injury. Temple of the Zombie was just an old zombie game that disappeared out of nowhere, so we were about right on that one. Still no footage of it or anything, so it's gonna stay on that Lost Media Iceberg. This was a cancelled event that was sponsored by Nickelodeon. 
It would have taken place in Dizzy Purple's Roblox's top model and Zathara's Adventure Obby, along with a new game called Nickelodeon Blimp Race, which was to be developed by Davy D, Usering, and Adel. You could have won 10 prizes, including, but not limited to, the Slime Suit, the Slime Shooter, and the Slime Tie, which all stick very closely to the Kids' Choice Awards slime theme. Unfortunately, the event was cancelled due to some copyright issues with Nickelodeon. Not sure exactly how that managed to happen. Rest in peace. What will you build is a 30 second Roblox TV advertisement uploaded to YouTube on August 23rd, 2012 that shows a variety of things Roblox has to offer. The ad features building creations such as a replica of the Eiffel Tower, an experimental jet while showing gameplay of the game Jet Wars Advanced Battle, as well as boasting millions of players are building in Roblox. There are some rather interesting errors to this such as in some scenes, real gameplay is not actually shown. This can be seen in certain shots such as the sniper scene where scopes didn't actually work like that back in 2000. 12. Various assets are also shown such as water and skyboxes that didn't exist until 2013. Also, a Minecraft TNT block is shown for some odd reason. Take with this what you will, it is definitely a strange advertisement. Roblox. What will you build? Roblox.com Now if you don't know, Vault 8166 is a Roblox myth slash creepypasta. It's a facility where supposedly certain hackers or important people had access to that gave them control over all of Roblox, allowing them to do pretty much whatever they wanted in games like use admin commands and such, or take control over every Roblox account. This entry claims that Vault 8166 is not a myth and it's not actually a physical vault, rather a collective of powerful hackers with a variety of bots and exploits that give them access to Roblox the way the myth claims they would have. Now there's no evidence such a thing existed though, and I highly doubt it's real, but it's interesting to think about, I don't know. Players who invited three or more friends to Roblox via email would gain the Inviter Badge. This badge was retired in October of 2013, meaning that you can no longer get this badge. But it still appears on the profiles of those who received it, making it quite a rarity to have. In a generally unknown game called Greenwood Town, there was a strange room with blood markings on it, multiple torture devices scattered across the game, and a ghost in the town's sewers. Not much is known about it, but it is assumed to be a victim of some sort of murder. Okay, first of all, I believe that the poster actually means Hospital Nightmares 3, not Hotel Nightmares 3. No game seems to have ever existed under that name. Now, Hospital Nightmares 3 was a very popular horror game on Roblox in 2012. It mixes the very popular obby content with horror, and it was very effective in scaring children, including me, at the time. The lobby is the classic cafeteria area that you start off in. Was there possibly another unused version of this lobby lying around? I don't know. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything about it. Throw it in the lost media iceberg. In 2017, Roblox took almost all of the old purchasable heads off sale to make way for the more diverse heads that came with Arthros, which would be released in the following year. The decision was generally disliked by the community, as many felt that this was an erasure of Roblox history. Now, everyone knows about the Ooh. oof sound. But there was actually another death sound that can be found in Roblox's file called Ouch. Ouch. Basically, nothing is known about it, but it is speculated that this sound was found on an illegal free sound website, and it was meant to be the sound that played whenever the player was damaged. But it was taken out due to being too annoying. Turns out a lot of you may have actually recognized this sound. That's because it was used in games outside of Roblox, such as Blocks World. I agree. Personal servers were a feature on Roblox where, if the player wished, they could mark a game they were creating as a personal server. This would make it so that only one server could run at a time and you'd build inside of Roblox instead of Roblox Studio, and these builds would automatically be saved over time. You could also assign ranks inside personal servers, which would grant players the abilities to do different things inside the game. Many players garnered around personal servers and it eventually became its own community with building personal servers quickly becoming the most popular because you could promote people to become a member and let them build inside your world. They were later replaced by Team Create in 2016. The paper hat is a hat that was added to Roblox in 2009. The texture itself has a headline that says, Telemon releases the new future of Roblox. Wait, did you say years? 
which hints towards the gears that would come out in the next few days. The first gear was released the same day as the paper hat, which is the Roblox Classic Brigand Sword. The Cruise was a 2013 event that was cancelled for unknown reasons. It was going to have its own custom game that would have had a Survive the Disasters theme and would have been developed by Hot Toth. You would have earned two hats, a McConnivore and the Grug package. It was probably cancelled for the better, because I wouldn't want to see people walking around in that package. <laughs> Roblox clans were yet another deprecated feature. Now this iceberg has a lot of these, which is fine. It's interesting to remember all the features Roblox tried out in the past. Anyways, clans were introduced in 2014 as a connection to player points that would add more depth to groups. If you paid a certain amount of Robux, you could turn your normal boring group into a clan. <laughs> Clans would compete for a top spot on the leaderboard. Basically, players would gather player points through playing any Roblox games, and then the clan score would add up their total amount of player points and put them on the leaderboard. This feature was removed in 2018 when player points were scrapped as well. m.roblox.com was simply a mobile version of the Roblox website, created in 2016. The mobile website gave users special items that could only be accessed on a mobile phone, such as the Jacko Mask. However, users were able to figure out a method to get these items on PC, which many believe is what led to Roblox eventually shutting down the entire website the following year. Gooblox.com was a 2007 April Fool's joke made by John Shedletsky, in which he said in a blog post that Google bought Roblox for $380 million. It was then debunked by someone, which pointed out those errors. The use of the word noob, the $380 million considering the early stage of Roblox, and the fact that Google didn't buy the Gooblox domain. David Bazuke then made a blog post congratulating the user that pointed out the mistakes and said that he had already bought the Gooblox domain. Still, to this day, typing gooblox.com just redirects to roblox.com. The Stamper tool was a tool that was introduced in late 2010. It was primarily used in Roblox Studio, Welcome to Roblox Building, and Personal Servers. The tool inserted models and decals from either the user's items or predefined sets created by Roblox. Roblox deprecated this tool and building method in October of 2017 and later blacklisted the word stamper entirely. Facebook Connect was a feature that allowed Roblox players with Facebook accounts to be able to share their Roblox status updates, places, and avatars to their Facebook friends. If you registered to Roblox using Facebook back around 2010 to 2011, you would be rewarded with the Epic Face item, which was based on a meme that was very popular around that time. Sets were simply groups of models or decals that players could make that the other players would subscribe to, basically like folders. For whatever reason, Roblox deprecated this feature in 2018, but using the insert tool you can still pull up old sets that you had previously subscribed to. Shedletsky Became a Bot refers to two things. Shedletsky Becoming a Bot like the Roblox and Builderman account rumors. Shedletsky's Trade Bots, which is the more likely option of the two. They were infamous for sending players either really great trades or really horrible trades. Even he himself admits that he used Trade Bots which would send people these trades, although there are some people who still don't believe that he uses Trade Bots. This obviously led to some hate and some confusion. Hate for the real bad trades and confusion because people wouldn't have expected a trade from someone like Shedletsky, nor have ever met Shedletsky, so they don't know why they got a trade from him. Now this iceberg is not referring to the Shadowrun video game, neither is it referring to the Shadowrun TTRPG, but the Shadowrun Roblox obby. In this obby you had to run, jump, and balance for 200 stages before reaching the end. And what happens when you do? you're transported to a dark game called Loneliness Simulator, where you sit at a solitary bench entrenched in darkness. A path of dim light leads you to two quotes about loneliness. We live as we dream, alone, and solitude is fine, but you need someone to tell that solitude is fine. Additionally, there is a pair of red eyes watching you in the distance that you can never reach. Now, one may interpret this as a deconstruction of what it means to be lonely. Another may interpret this as a creepy and unsettling game. In reality, it's probably just the devs telling you, hey yo, you wasted a portion of your life on this stupid Roblox obby, you have no friend, no family. 
This entry refers to the trailer released by Shedletsky over 12 years ago to promote the addition of custom shirts and pants into the game. It caught on pretty quickly and instantly became a meme amongst the early Roblox community. Watching it now though, it's honestly really surreal and a bit creepy. Roblox. Shirts. Shirts. And shirts. Shirts. And shirts. Roblox. And shirts. Roblox. Shirts. 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 Roblox. Roblox brings you. Pants. 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 And pants. Good Blocks is another revival project focused on emulating 2009 Roblox, like Graphictorial or Finope. I'm sure it's got its fair share of drama, but I wouldn't be able to know because the community is pretty heavily moderated and I don't have access to it. Bait and Switch games are games that, in the title and thumbnail, appear to be a wide variety of games, such as obbies, tycoons, or simulator games but once joined would teleport to a single, much more low effort game that is not at all like advertised. This is essentially a clickbait method where a botnet will create as many appealing thumbnail and game titles as possible to appeal to little kids, and then have them redirect to their crappy game that nobody would otherwise play so they can farm Robux from one singular game rather than making a dozen unique games. Additionally, these type of bait and switch games often cycle through different thumbnails and titles so that they don't even have to generate new places. And sometimes even certain free models would have scripts that take over games and force them to teleport to the bait and switch place. Just another scummy money grab tactic that you should expect by now from the Roblox community. If you look around for really any amount of time, you can find various videos or places dedicated to recreating the tragic events of September 11th. Most of the time, these recreations are made out of respect, but sometimes they were made for edgy memes. Either way, it's always weird and a bit unsettling to see the Twin Towers fall in Roblox. This was yet another old feature that allowed Roblox users to join a party together, and once the leader of the party joined the game, everyone else in said party would automatically get teleported into the game. This was a useful feature at the time, because really the only other way to join your friends' games was to go all the way to their profile and click join, and when it came to parties, it would automatically try to join a game that the entire party could fit into. Of course, this party feature was removed entirely and replaced with a feature that allowed anyone to join friends' games just by clicking join while in a chat. Still kind of miss parties though. I just forgot to mention that parties still exist on the console versions of Roblox, so that's fun. These are simply blog posts that were basically Roblox's way of letting developers show what they've been working on through official blog posts. There were specific conditions you had to fulfill before being featured on these special posts, these being your place had to be on the front page at least once, you generally had to have a way to lose slash die, and well, your place had to be good. Holiday Magic was a cancelled Roblox event that was supposed to take place between November 2018 and January 2019. There is almost no information regarding this event, and there are currently no known prizes for this event that exist. Wind of Fjords was a commonly used track in many early Roblox games, mainly horror games, with it being a usable module before sound files were added. It was composed by Minomis of Domu and Fine Ground Coffee Crew. This track might be known to you, however, by Telemon's Sword. On some occasions, exploiters in Roblox use their abilities to perform lewd actions on a random victim, locking them in, well, inappropriate animations. The most infamous case of this was when this happened to a 7-year-old girl and it was reported on by The Insider. Some of y'all are messed up. Pre-2006 Games Out of Bounds This topic has been widely disputed on what exactly it could mean. Researchers claim that it could regard a few things. First, it could mean that you could access Out of Bounds areas in older versions of Roblox games through glitches and exploits. It could also mean that you couldn't build outside the base plate in older Roblox clients. However, either theory is hard to test considering many of the older Roblox clients are still considered lost media. The $500 bribing incident was when someone bribed an outsourced moderator from India to give them access to the admin panel, in which they could see users' various personal data like phone numbers, emails, and MAC addresses of millions of accounts that could be accessed by Roblox moderators. The biggest thing of all, they could bypass the 2FA of any accounts and sell their item. Another thing that was revealed through the leak was a hidden feature called Protected Users. Protected Users are basically those users that were less likely to get moderated by Roblox. All-star creators, high ranking devs and people with a lot of limited items are considered to be a part of this list. 
Critical Strike was, and still is, a very popular class-based arena fighter game on our favorite platform, Roblox. It was very popular and things were going well for the creator, Epic Critical, until March of 2020, when everything would fall apart. Epic Critical was exposed for being a bio fighter and moved being a 13-year-old. If you want the full story about that, you should watch Koneko Kitten's video on the subject. After this, of course, he quit Roblox, leaving it to his dev team to continue work on CS, but they too quit, leaving the game dead in the water. That being said, it still has a rather sizable active player base, which I won't make any comments on. Play Strife instead. Back when the Roblox forums were first created, the main subforum was General Discussion. It was changed to Roblox Talk, or RT, because it was confusing. General discussion didn't mean discussion about anything, it meant general discussion about Roblox. So it was just changed for more clarity, that's all. These are games that are either replicating or inspired by the Again, some of these may be made out of respect, but most of them come off as extremely insensitive at best. It's honestly wild that some of these games are still up on the platform. Funbox was a now deleted game that was simply a white box that would begin rapidly flashing several different colors and playing loud distorted audio, which was obviously intended to induce epileptic seizures and generally scare people. This game was often used to troll, be it through getting someone to play it or forcing players to teleport it through other games. What I will show you next is footage of the fun box. Uh, flash warning. Roblox is a platform which generally moderates their usernames very closely, obviously not allowing for swear words to be put in usernames. However, of course, for as long as the website has been around, people have tried their hardest to have swears in their names. The most well-known incident of this happening was with Speeder420, an account that somehow was able to, well, be named what it was named. He got very popular and then of course banned. Still, he persisted, making several other bypass names, each one getting banned just like the last. As I'm making this video, he supposedly still resides on the platform under this bypass name, which has not been banned. Although, it might get banned now that I've ratted him out. Oopsie. Roblox points, not to be confused with player points, were a free currency system that predated Roblox in 2005. You would earn these on a daily basis or be rewarded by playing minigames. That's it. It was removed in 2006 and again replaced by Robux. TBC only items refers to when some hats on the Roblox catalog were restricted for TBC slash BC slash OBC only members. You would usually find BC only items though because the only TBC only item that was available on the catalog was just the TBC skateboard. Otherwise it was all BC only or higher. I'd assume that some items were also locked for TBC but then were cancelled behind the scenes. So now we just have BC only items. These were later replaced with premium sale items. This was a cancelled 2012 event that was to sponsor the Clone Wars line of LEGO Star Wars building sets. It is unknown why it was cancelled and little information was known about it until 2019 when the Darth Vader and Stormtrooper I meant Clone Trooper rigs were publicized, assumedly to be used as packages. Iron Noob was supposed to be a forum where players from different games would gather. One of those games would be Roblox. This forum was created by Shedletsky, which was what caused it to have a massive following. The forums eventually died, but some have tried to revive it since then. The latest one being around 2015, where you can actually still access the website now. So after posting this video, obviously there was a bit of traffic towards the website due to my video. I even made a fun little post on there. And then the website was taken down and then it was put back up again. The website itself isn't very active, but apparently the Discord is active, so. I also found some snapshots from when the website was originally created in 2013, so here you go. The 2005ers are a very small group of users who joined Roblox in 2005. They are as follows. Baseball, Builderman, John Doe, Jane Doe, Diana, Eric2, Retinia, and Test. Additionally, there are five other users who joined in 2005 who are now banned from the platform. 
There was an early model for a redesign created in 2007, presumably by John Shedletsky based on the model's codename John. The mesh was discovered in 2017, 10 years later, and was remarkable because of how Bruh. ugly and out of place it seemed. People think if the redesign was put in place, Roblox would have become a completely different game. It also appears to feature an unused version of the 2006 Roblox logo on the chest of the model. Once the hunt actually ended and players collected all eggs, they realized that not every single egg that was leaked were actually collectible. As it turns out, Roblox ended up scrapping certain eggs, such as the gross egg and its color variants. It is unknown exactly as to why they did so, though. In 1989, David Bazuki and his brother Greg would release an educational physics game called Interactive Physics. He did not know it at the time, but this game was technically a very early prototype and predecessor to Roblox. It was essentially a very basic and two-dimensional version of Roblox, where you were given a set of objects, nicknamed a toolbox, to play around with as you interacted with the 2D environment and messed around with the physics. It went on to win multiple awards and was very popular, which is probably what inspired David to move on and create Roblox over 10 years later. The Ghost Walker is a weapon in Sword Fight on the Heights 4, and eventually was brought to the Roblox catalog as a gear. It's rumored that this weapon collects dead Robloxians, similar to how the sword itself has the unique quirk of collecting levels after every kill. After certain levels are reached, passive abilities like damage and invisibility are increased. It, of course, does not literally collect dead Robloxians, but it's more of a lore speculation slash headcanon. During the 2013 egg hunt, players got word of a new feature that would concern the eggs. Some eggs would actually hatch and produce a brand new item. The scrambled egg was one of the rarest eggs of 2013, and many players speculated. Would this one hatch? Some players wanted to see it hatch while others didn't want to, which led to many fights on the forums. Depending on which side you were on, you were either disappointed or egg-static to learn that the scrambled egg would in fact not hatch. Either way, the following year the idea of eggs hatching was canned since if an egg hatched, the original egg item would be gone forever, and players didn't really like that. Roblox is a very popular website for children, you already knew that, and it also has a rampant online dating scene. Well, there are plenty of communities in Roblox that try to take advantage of and exploit these young children. In 2018, Green Lego Cats posted a video reviewing weird online dating groups, which obviously appeared to be a buddy ring. These groups had Discord servers and were centered around doing very NSFW things that no kid should be doing. There were plenty of messages requesting NSFW pictures to be exchanged, and it's likely that a majority of the accounts requesting the images are slaughtered. This honestly disgusts me. This is the third and longest part of the series. This one was the most difficult so far, as this is where we start to see fake slash joke slash RFA entries start to pop up. I also emailed a bunch of Roblox creators uh, to see if they wanted to collab, but <laughs> nobody responded to me, so there's no more collabs in this video, unfortunately. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to part 3 of the full Roblox Iceberg Explained. If you haven't watched the first two parts already, that's fine, you can watch them after this video. You don't really need the context from the previous videos. Today we will be covering layer 4 of the iceberg, which is a beast. So get ready, grab a snack, and let's start the video. Personal Server Vandalism This entry is exactly what it sounds like. If you watched my previous video, you already know what personal servers are, but for a recap, they're simply places with only one server where you could invite people to either visit or build in real time. A common trolling tactic when personal servers were around was to gain trust, get building privileges, and destroy everything in the personal servers. Minigames Back in 2005, when Roblox was still in beta, there was no such thing as places. Instead, players would play pre-made minigames and earn Roblox points. That's all you could do. These mini games included, but are not limited to, bridge it, contain it, beat the lions, and block it. We will discuss a couple more mini games later on. Amy Model The Amy Model was an extremely inappropriate model that was created in 2010 and could be put in games. The model would say very NSFW dialogue and would chase the player around. When a player came into contact with the model, they would be forced into this position. It is unknown exactly who the original creator is as the original model is now long gone. 
The farthest I could trace the model was to creator Vestibule, but I don't believe that this was the original model. You may still find the Amy model around in games today, but probably without all the sexual content. Guest data. This is technical stuff, so I'm going to try my best to explain it, but I'm not very smart. Guest data is a browser cookie that assigns a guest's in-game name if they were to play as a guest. The last four digits are randomly generated numbers each guest would have when joining a game. The interesting thing about this, however, is that the number would change every time you loaded a new page on the site. So let's say if your number was 1387 and you clicked on games, a new number, maybe 3649, would generate for you. And that would continue to change until you actually jumped into a game as a guest. Now, people were able to manually edit their guest number by editing the cookies using browser extensions such as edit this cookie, which allowed them to give themselves names such as guest1 or guest666. Of course, guests were removed in 2017, so guest data is essentially a retired function now. Super Anthro. Anthro was basically the predecessor to Arthro. Now, Super Anthro. Now, I'm not 100% sure what that is referring to. It could be this image from the Roblox Dev Conference in 2018, which featured more hyper-realistic versions of Roblox models, which were labeled as the future of Anthro. What's weird about this image is that they are including Fortnite models. Either way, Anthro took a different path, becoming Arthro as we know it today. Teleport Service Secret Games Teleport Service is essentially what allows you to teleport users between places in games. A while ago, users were being teleported in random games to a place called Loading, which was owned by Roblox Faster Loader. This user, while existing on Roblox, does not have a page and cannot be seen by any user on the site. This game's description was Faster Roblox Loading. Since the game is not deleted, it's difficult to know exactly what the game was and why games had Lua virus scripts that were hidden in free models to teleport to this game. Google Play Blocks Hunt Promotion in January of 2019, Roblox did a promotion with the game Blocks Hunt, sponsored by Google through the Google Play Store, the Android exclusive app store. Players could purchase the Gilded Triad Crown exclusively through the Play Store, and then when they equipped that hat in the game, they got extra tokens at the end of each round. That's it. 2005 Clients I've talked about this sporadically a few times throughout my videos, but the 2005 Client also known as Dynablox, is completely lost. Nothing remains of this except for a few screenshots. The search for the 2005 client has been around for a while, but the most recent ongoing effort I could find was this Reddit thread on r slash lost media, which was active as recently as two months ago. The farthest this group has gotten was discovering the name of one of the people who worked on Roblox in 2005, Morgan McGuire. As of the day this video is uploaded, the search for the elusive 2005 client still goes on, but I hope that this video can reinvigorate the search a little bit. Green Lego Cats Paid by Roblox Green Lego Cats 123, or Cow Cow, was, and still sort of is, a very controversial YouTuber in the Roblox sphere. He used to make a large amount of videos trolling popular places in Roblox and quote unquote exposing Roblox with over sensationalized and antagonistic videos which generally painted Roblox in a very bad light. This entry I assume is the theory that Roblox, most likely some time after banning the Cow Cow account, paid Green Lego Cats to move away from making such antagonistic videos against the platform, since now Green Lego Cats' videos have transitioned to a much more safe and palatable commentary style. Do I believe this is true? No, not at all. It's more likely that Cow Cow just grew up and naturally moved away from sensationalist content like that. Roblox Porn Ads Roblox, like most websites, have ads on the top and side of the web page. Now most of the time those ads are either targeted towards kids or user created ads for games and groups. Some players have claimed to see actual ads for if you're on websites. Although with no evidence to back this up, I'm not sure. But there was a user created ad that went around that was, well, let me just show you. Yeah. While I'm not sure Roblox directly checks every ad, it's a bit gross these ads managed to get approved. Roblox 2011 trailer backwards. In 2011, Roblox released a new trailer. It was pretty one of the mill. This entry refers to the controversy around what would happen when you reversed said trailer. You would hear some random dialogue that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, the only thing I could make out was possibly like, the S word, but that's about it. I mean, there's some weird growling noises, but nothing much. 
footsteps in single player. Some players claim to have heard footsteps when they should not have in single player games where nobody else should have been around. It is practically impossible to prove these claims, but some people do claim to have heard weird footsteps while playing single player games that should have no other people walking around. The cause of this could be anything ranging from paranoia to Roblox ghosts. We'll never really know. Game Test Sites Game test sites were Roblox websites that were used to test certain features and website designs. They were basically isolated versions of Roblox. If you made an account, your Robux and items were separate from the actual official Roblox platform and were subject to be reset at any time. This made things like giving players 1 million Robux for testing viable because they didn't get 1 million actual Robux on their actual accounts. Apparently these game test sites were actually the main reason for the April Fool's hack of 2012. A user was able to log into a game test site masquerading as an admin and getting their Roblo security code, which was actually the same as the Roblo security code used on the official Roblox website. All game sites are currently deleted now. RSG Space Station The RSG Space Station is a game created by developer Guest0000 sometime in 2010 or 2011. At first it appears to be a normal game about a space station, but it hides a dark secret. When you join the game, you are spawned in a blue room with one hallway. Going through that hallway will lead you to a red rectangle that you can enter. Once entering, it will lead you to a bridge with a black void. Jumping into this void will lead you to a black base plate with trees and an entrance to a room with black walls, ceiling, and floor, with the epic face on it. Walking away from the epic face will lead you to a hallway, and at the end of it there is another epic face, this time with its mouth upside down. In one of the corners there is a very small entrance to an epic face, this time with red eyes, angry eyebrows, and an upside down mouth that's drooling. Once passing this, you will finally enter the black room with a dark figure that is in the room. This exchange led to the creation of the black room, one of the most popular creepypastas on Roblox. The RSG space station was either privated or taken down and is no longer accessible. Eric Castle's death censored. Eric Castle was the co-founder of Roblox who died on February 11th, 2013. This entry, I don't know much about it. Eric Castle's death was made very public, so maybe the censoring was in Roblox games? I'm not sure. Crossroads Black Rooms This may refer to the existence of black rooms in the classic Roblox game Crossroads. Referring to the RSG Space Station entry, the black rooms are small black rooms that cannot be escaped from once entered. There is no proof that any black rooms exist in the Crossroads, however. Xbox One S Roblox Bundle you can buy certain bundles of the Xbox One S with Roblox. If you do so, you get three exclusive packages, some items, and 2,500 Robux. The three bundles are Bright Tyson Featherweight Champ, Metal Menace Mech, and Kijo the Vengeful Samurai. The items are Xbox One S Roblox Bundle, World Championship Belt, Mecha Domino Crown, and Kitomaro the Cursed Blade. You can still find these bundles today. Roblox Alpha. When Roblox was in its alpha stage, it was actually called GoBlox. It then switched soon after to Dynablox and finally, of course, Roblox. There is no known footage of this alpha, however. Mike's Paintball Tournament. Mike's Paintball Tournament was a contest that was held in the game Ultimate Paintball by user Mike's in 2007. The contest had 32 teams consisting of 5 players for each team and they would compete for 2 rounds consisting of 15 minutes. It was a classic tournament style so if you lost, you were out. In the end, the Super Mario Strikers won with Metal Mario, Ape911, Hexapoda, BLXHD, and Madman1234. Very cool. Trump hacking incident. Back in 2020, some amount of Roblox accounts were hacked and changed to spread pro-Trump propaganda. As it turns out, most of these accounts were victim to an info leak on the platform, allowing the hacker or hackers to access their accounts. Unfortunately, hacking a few accounts and putting Trump 2020 was not enough to sway the vote, I guess. Eric Castle's death saved Roblox. This entry seems to be the theory that, well, Eric Castle's death saved Roblox, either by lighting a new spark in the community, which gathered to memorialize his death, thus increasing activity, or because Eric Castle's plans for the future of Roblox would have caused it to do much worse than it ended up being under just David Bazuki's lead. The IRM The IRM is more commonly known as the Imperial Robloxian Military. 
This group of people, among other Roblox military groups, has a very strict presence as one of the more well-known Roblox military groups. It has been accused of being Nazi propaganda and has been raided multiple times by people such as Flamingo and others. Nazera Origins Nazera is a Roblox song that could be used for free in many Roblox games since 2011. Now what many people do not know is that it is not an original song. Not exactly. It's a compilation of three different songs. The first part is Pull Me Out by Jeremy Philip Holt. The second part is Rain by Playhead. And the third part is Investigation Medium, which is just a default iMovie song. In the end, although Nazera is three different songs, it is mostly known for its midsection, Rain. So in the end, I guess it might as well be just Rain. Roblox Brainwashing This is just the sentiment that Roblox is brainwashing children. Many parents and news outlets claim that children are having their minds melted by Roblox's many inappropriate games and such. Code Reading In March of 2020, Roblox made an official post announcing that they read and review the code of all games posted to the platform, and games which code is automatically flagged as inappropriate or offensive can be taken down and the creators banned. This announcement received a lot of backlash from developers in the community, who did not want others to read their code. To a developer, a game's code is often private and personal, and for others to read that, I would imagine, would be like, in a way, someone reading your stupid nerd diary. Despite the backlash, Roblox hasn't, as far as I know, stopped reading and flagging code. So, Do a flip. This entry is most likely in reference to this copypasta. 97% of teenagers would cry if they saw Justin Bieber on a tower about to jump. If you are one of the 3% sitting there with popcorn screaming, DO A BACKFLIP, then copy and paste this to all your contacts. Back in the day, many Roblox users would have this copy pasta in their profile descriptions or they would send them to others through messages. Although this entry has its place in Roblox, it is certainly much bigger than the platform itself. X Scene X X Scene X was an exploiter who was popular around 2009. You would hear whispers of their exploits around the community, with many people claiming that they destroyed many Roblox games with their exploits. At some point, a former forum moderator, armymen 3 do one leaked confidential exploiting tips to X Scene X, causing the moderator and presumably X Scene X not too long after to be terminated. Although I'm pretty sure X Scene X was a real hacker, I couldn't find any actual evidence of it. I did find something in my research. Someone on 4chan claims to know more than I could find about XCNX. Take these ramblings with a grain of salt, however. Apparently, XCNX was actually responsible for hacking a few broken items into the game, such as the teapot turret. Gentleman Springs Hat On May 5th, 2016, the Gentleman Springs Hat was released onto the platform. It was a normal hat with a normal description. Nothing was wrong with it except for one detail. It costs 100 ticks. Well, what's wrong with that, one might think. The issue with this is that ticks were discontinued one month prior to this hat being sold. This contradiction got many people very excited as it led them to believe that ticks were coming back, but it turns out it was only a glitch or a mistake, and it was switched to costing 100 Robux a few days later. Blocks Watch Eyes Actually Existing Blocks Watch is a well-known Roblox myth, and it goes a little something like this. In certain games around Roblox, such as Meep City or Jailbreak, you may see pairs of white or red eyes watching you from a distance. If you get close to them, your account is deleted and you are IP banned from Roblox. Of course, it's just a myth, but this entry does claim that there is some truth to it. There is, of course, no evidence that that is the case. The only way I could imagine the Blocks Watch eyes to be real in any capacity would be if developers put them in their games as easter eggs slash pranks, but there's no way that they could actually, you know, delete your account or anything like that. Roblox 2014 Dark Mode Back in 2014, before Roblox had the official option to switch their website design to Dark Mode, you could install a plugin, Dark Reader, that would allow you to use the Dark theme on multiple websites one including Roblox. This was not an official website redesign, however. MeWinner MeWinner is an old Roblox account that was created back in 2006. It was just a normal account with nothing really going on with it until a video was posted called MeWinner's Roblox Video. I don't know when the video was first uploaded, but it occurs as follows. The video shows a user, supposedly MeWinner, walking around in what seems to be the 2006 Roblox headquarters. 
Nothing out of the ordinary happens until the user heads into the HQ basement, as the light would go dim and ambient sounds would play. The room would turn pitch black, with a black figure standing in front of the user, barely visible. The user then gets teleported back outside the building, where he is greeted with another figure appearing behind them spontaneously. It is claimed that this video was uploaded by B Winner himself, but it was confirmed to be fake. It's unknown as to who actually made it, why they used Me Winner, and who Me Winner actually is, however. Fiddler 2 Fiddler 2 is one of the oldest Roblox exploits around. It allows you to change your character's animations to any existing Roblox animation, as well as change your account age and membership status. This exploit was patched a few years ago. Gear Bypass Throughout Roblox's history, there have been multiple breaches of security which allowed players to bring any gears they wanted into games which normally did not allow gears. A notable incident of this occurring was around 2018 in the game High School Life. There was a bug in the game's clothing system that instead of giving you not only clothes, you could gain any gear on Roblox. This was because this game did not limit you to only using shirt IDs on the Roblox catalog. Because every item on the Roblox catalog, including gears, all have their IDs in the same location, you could swap a gears ID for a shirt's ID and give yourself whatever you wanted. Some people use this exploit to get, well, you know guns, and you can imagine what happened next. Temporary Server List Removal In July of 2017, Roblox removed the ability to see the server list in any Roblox games. This was due to bots scraping through server lists and sending friend requests to everyone they saw. This raised a lot of commotion and eventually they fixed the issue and returned server lists. Roblox 2.0 First Version Roblox 2.0 is the slimmer version of the Roblox body offered in the package that was uploaded to the Avatar Shop on May 14th, 2010. While it now looks like this with multiple joint bends, its first version was much simpler since Roblox didn't have joints back then. First Obby Created Roblox has had many game genres throughout its almost 15 years of existence, but one of the most popular Roblox game genres are the Obstacle Courses, or Obbies for short. Obbies have been a part of the Roblox community for at least a decade, but because of just how long the platform has been around for, combined with the fact that older games can easily become lost, it is unknown what the first Obby is. But what we do know is one of the earliest Obbies ever made was Dark Silver 2's Obstacle Course, made by a Roblox user. Dark Silver 2 on May 20th, 2007. Roblox. Roblox was a feature on the Roblox website released in 2008 that allowed you to trade Robux for ticks with a ratio. If a trade matched and the ratio was the same, the trade would happen automatically. Now, of course, with a feature like this, there will be some people manipulating the system to get as many ticks and Robux off of it as they can. People were able to abuse it by manipulating ratios to gain extra currency. It was shut down in 2016 when ticks were removed. The Great Strategy Sequels As covered in the previous part, The Great Strategy Song is a song created by Badils back in 2005, and it is widely regarded as the Roblox theme due to its use in the trailer. What is less known, however, are the two sequels released in 2016 and 2019, simply called The Great Strategy 2 and 3 respectively. There are also multiple other versions of these songs, such as The Great Strategy 3B and The Great Strategy 2 Revision. I'd like to play all these songs for you right now, but I suggest you just look them up by yourself. Shedletsky Playlist Icon Shudletsky is someone who doesn't need further introduction. Due to his legendary status, whenever Shudletsky joins a game, he gets a special epic-faced icon on his player list, just so that everyone would know that they're in a game with the legendary Shudletsky. He is, however, not the only person to have a special player list icon. Three other users have their own icons, those being Sorkis, Jedika Chef, and Roblox Sai. David Bazuki Alt. This entry is pretty obvious. David Bazuki, CEO of Roblox, has multiple alternative accounts he uses to test features in Roblox as a normal player. This is confirmed by him in the bio description of his official account. The identity of any of his alts and the number of alts he has remains a mystery, so it's possible you may have played in a game with him before and were left none the wiser. Roblox Secret Packs 
This is probably just an urban legend that there were certain games on Roblox where you could join if you were depressed and make Sasuus packs with other players. This may have been a real thing at some point in Roblox's past, but I couldn't really find any evidence or mention of games that serve this purpose. I also can't imagine this being a thing in modern Roblox due to its heavy chat moderation and the availability of much better platforms for communication, such as Discord. However, due to Roblox's huge player base and long history, I guess it's possible for this to have happened at least once. Since this video, I have received multiple comments telling me that there were some quote unquote Yasuus games that had things like guns, knives, and other, you know, game endy things. I'm not sure if these games were meant to encourage taking your own life or what, however. Thrillville Gore. According to a user on 4chan, when JJ5X5's Thrillville Park game was first created, players could find dead Roblox avatars. The bodies cannot be found today. I could not find any video proof or players claiming to have seen them either. Jailbreak Secret Bank Floors In the game Jailbreak by Bedimo, there was a secret found in early 2019. When you robbed the bank, you could get a secret room by swimming to avoid the lasers, unlocking the vault, placing a dynamite in the door near the vault, swimming underneath the lasers, and then once you're at the end of the water, jump and then you can clip through a wall, where you will find a sign showing the jailbreak logo and another sign saying, shh, this place is a secret. Good job finding it. Make a wish winner group. Pie Person 50, Sethy Cakes, and Diamond Pistol 25 were three kids in the Make a Wish program a program that gives terminally ill children one wish. It was rumored that Pie Person faked having cancer in order to get the domino crown, but that's likely not true given that Make-A-Wish does do heavy background checks to catch these things. I couldn't find anything about one of the winners being removed, probably just an icebergism. Game copying. Game copying is relatively self-explanatory. There have been many users who, in the past, have copied games from other creators. The most well-known being Jared Valdez 4, who is responsible for many popular games and groups. He, and most others who copy games, targeted uncopy locked games, which are games that Roblox actually allows you to copy. Is it possible to copy games that are copy locked in Roblox? Yes, actually. There are exploits that allow users to copy entire games, receiving all models and map details, but you are still not able to copy scripts with these exploits, which is perhaps its only saving grace. Still, this has been a huge issue for a long time in Roblox, and it's not gone away quite yet. Super Moderator Badge The Super Moderator Badge was a badge given to Super Moderators. This badge is no longer given out since the Administrator Badge became the badge for all of Roblox staff. The change happened after Roblox changed the style of how their badge looked. Builder Man's Design Contest This was the first Roblox event of 2008. All you had to do was draw a design for Builderman's residence, I guess. There were 10 winners, including one Stickmaster Luke. Each winner got their place actually built in Roblox and installed on the Builderman account, as well as the light bulb item. Daisy's Destruction Games. Now, if you don't know what Daisy's Destruction is already, it is an infamous snuff video in which a little girl is tortured. It's terrible. This entry implies that there are games inspired by this film somewhere on Roblox, although we currently have no evidence of where these games would be. If they ever were on the platform, they must be long gone by now, rightfully so. Ambient Shadows Ambient Shadows was a former feature on Roblox that, as the name suggests, added shadows to your Roblox game. The update came out in 2011 and could be accessed by putting Roblox on max graphics. Eventually the feature was removed due to it not running that well on most computers and was replaced with the more accessible dynamic lighting which in 2018 would go on to become the future is bright. NBC restrictions. In 2012 Roblox released the ability to play games on mobile but they decided to make a controversial restriction. Builders Club users could play any game on the platform, but non-Builders Club members could only play a restricted set of games that would rotate every once in a while. This decision was, of course, met with much dissent, and it was changed only a week later. King Arthur's Castle When Roblox was in beta, there were no places like there are today. Instead, the players would play minigames to gain Roblox points instead of Robux, at the time they didn't exist. One of those games was called King Arthur's Castle, 
The concept of the minigame was simple. There's a castle, and you have to defend it from attackers. There's not much information about the game, however, so I don't know exactly how it worked. Roblox Farlands If you follow Minecraft to any degree, you may know about their Farlands. In older versions of the game, if you went far enough away from spawn, the game would bug out and the terrain would generate oddly and unnaturally. Well, as it turns out, Roblox has their own Farlands, and it's actually still around today. If you travel far enough away from the main base plate of any Roblox game, your character will start glitching out. It takes hundreds of thousands of studs travel to see any visual difference, but once you get to around a million studs away from spawn, you can see some crazy effects. This is still a feature around today, and it probably isn't going anywhere anytime soon. You can try it yourself if you have a few hours of your time. Roblox University 2014 Columbine Map in the Roblox University 2014 map created for the events, people noticed that the building shown in the trailer had striking similarities to Columbine High School, with the parts shown looking eerily similar to the blueprints and aerial shots of the school. While I'm sure there was no malicious intent with these similarities, the two prevailing theories are that this was A, just a coincidence, or B, that whoever was in charge of designing the map just accidentally modeled it after Columbine after looking up school reference or something. As of now, however, the university was changed as to avoid further controversy. Roblox in Korea Simply put, Roblox doesn't have much localization support for Korea. That being said, the Roblox community in Korea is rather sizable still, and this is shown by Sikrot, whose goal it is to provide Korean translations for Roblox games that are almost always in English. What also makes playing Roblox in South Korea difficult is that they have a strong cryptocurrency regulation, which apparently actually prevents people in South Korea from trading with others in games such as Adopt Me. 2011 Trailer Places If you ever watched the trailer for Roblox in 2011, you probably thought it looked insanely awesome. Cars flying everywhere, dance parties, buildings being decimated in space, it's crazy. The thing not many people realized though was that the majority of places shown in the trailer are just not real, or information has been altered to deceive players. Pillars of Pillage and Timmy MC Ponage, not real. Cops and Robbers, not real, at least not this version. Dance Party, not real. Ice World Base, not real and they used a green screen for the skybox. That's not even a real skybox. And what may be the worst part is that when they used real places, they flashed them for only half a second and didn't actually credit those creators. All in all, kind of a scummy trailer when you look back on it without those rose-tinted glasses. Taco Bell Salami. Taco Bell Salami is just a word of vomit meme phrase that some people on Roblox like to spam in a similar vein to the Cuban iPad phrase. Apparently it has its roots in the Mugen Roblox games, but I'm not sure. Roblox Footage Archives Channel Roblox Footage Archives, or RFA, is a project created by- Yeah, so I talked to the guy who made the RFA and he doesn't want his name to be mentioned, which is ironic considering the fact that RFA makes up half the iceberg, but you won't hear his name anymore. It is a myth slash ARG that involves old fake Roblox footage. RFA is actually responsible for the majority of entries I skipped in this section, such as red static, seizure inducing flashes, and nostalgic players. I'm pretty sure that's because Boomblox had a hand in creating this iceberg and wanted to kind of use this iceberg to set up the RFA ARG. Unfortunately, however, this project has been closed down mysteriously. Bring it back. People really liked it. I really hope you do. Steer the Spheres. Steer the Spheres was a contest. Contests were a feature in 2005 where Roblox players play specific minigames for prizes. Steer the Spheres was just one of those. Controller Variable This was a feature in Roblox from its creation up until 2009, and it was pretty much a variable in almost all physical objects that, if triggered, would make the player control the object as if it were the player using their keyboard. This was removed partly because they couldn't get it to work within Roblox's newer multiplayer model. Crash Driver This was another minigame on early Roblox. The goal of Crash Driver was driving down a steep slope into objects that were at the bottom of the slope, earning Roblox points by doing so. There is no information on this besides a patent which shows the minigame. Eric Frenchman on Roblox Eric Frenchman is a blogger who, in 2009, made a post on his blog site 
pardon my French, called Is Roblox Safe for Kids? Not sure, so I blocked it. Eric goes on to talk about how it was not parental safe and complained about the security program. The article got a lot of responses from Roblox players and even got a response from Builderman, David Bazooki himself. In 2011, Eric made another blog called Revisiting Roblox where he states this, Dear Roblox Wiki Clicks, Thanks for the traffic. It's been over two years since I made this post. I've moved on now and so is my son when it comes to gaming. Feel free to make your comments to defend Roblox. Please refrain from parental advice and cursing. It devalues whatever positive commentary you might have. I think the folks at Roblox would be very impressed with your love and defense of the site, but now my son chooses other games to play and has never asked me again about Roblox. I had considered disabling comments from this point on, but I decided against it because of your passion. However, as I wrote above, we moved on, so while your appropriate, tasteful comments might sway some other parents, it means nothing to me unless he chooses to play again. Pardon my French, Eric. That was 10 years ago, however, so it's very likely that his kids have had access to the platform since then, and he may have even given it a try himself. Who knows? Roblox Nintendo Switch port already released. Many Roblox players want Roblox ported to the Nintendo Switch. This is, however, very unlikely because console exclusivity tracks go against the deal. However, it already is possible to play Roblox on the Switch through modding. It's actually possible to load an Android OS onto the Switch, making it possible to download the Roblox Android app and play it on your Nintendo Switch. Is it an official port? No. Is it a convenient or even decently functioning port? No. But it is there if you want to try hard enough. Lens Flare Lens Flare was a texture that would appear on the screen while the player's camera was pointed towards the sun from 2003 to late 2007. In 2008, after Roblox introduced the new lighting system, Lens Flare would only be visible to a player if they had their rendering option set on Legacy slash OpenGL stable in the game settings. Gift Explosion Secret Gift in 2012 to 2017, there was a yearly event called Gift Explosion, where you could get various gifts by just buying them or by doing specific missions. Many people have speculated that there is a secret gift that we have not found yet. Since we haven't found this gift and we don't know what it looks like, you know what that means. Throw it on the lawn. Forum 49. Forum 49 is an unknown forum. There is no evidence of it existing only posts on the CNG subforums demanding we remember Forum 49. Apparently it was a forum that existed for only 20 minutes before being taken down. If you have any experience with Forum 49, please let me know in the comments. 45229 is a real error code. Error 45229 is a Roblox myth. Again, I'm not here to cover myths, but to quickly summarize it, this 45229 account would send you a link, and upon clicking it, your computer would crash. When you reboot it, you would get teleported to a spooky game and get Boom. scared, yada yada. This entry claims that error 45229 is based off a real error code that you can get in Roblox, but I can't tell you if this is fact or fiction because of my very limited knowledge of Roblox's code and error messages. Toolbox Accounts in 2005, Roblox created an account by the name of Toolbox to test out the Toolbox feature on Roblox. The Toolbox account is well known among the Roblox community for being one of the first 10 accounts that were made on Roblox back in 2005, although it says 2006 on Toolbox's profile, and for making what is probably the first model on Roblox, Ball 4x4x4. In August of 2018, the Toolbox account was terminated, but the termination was revoked this year on January 7th, 2021. Desdemona accounts. Desdemona is one of Roblox's more mysterious accounts. Desdemona would post cryptic messages, specifically after Friday, January 7th in 2011. There were also rumors that Desdemona would hack users. Now I don't know where these rumors came from, but we can take a step to solving this mystery when we take a look at this account's second post on the forums. This account is someone's alt. Whose alt? Mr. Crazy Person. They claim that their main account was banned for three days, and so they'd be using Desdemona as an alt. From there, I can assume that MCP used the Desdemona alt to just post whatever they wanted to the forums before deciding that they would get themselves terminated by posting a slur and inappropriate messages. At this point, their main account ban would be almost up anyways, so that makes sense. I think that would be the solved mystery of this Desdemona account, assuming that this is the account that was referred to. A user posted to Reddit claiming to be the owner of the Desdemona account, 
stating, Back in like 2011 to 2012, there was an account called Desdemona that would send random users PMs consisting of, you're next. That's it. Their avatar was all black with default face and no clothes. Over time, rumors started to spread around the Roblox forums, off topic and such, that whoever got those PMs would have their accounts deleted. It became a small creepypasta-like story along the likes of 1x1x1x1. Eventually, that account stopped sending messages and Desdemona faded into obscurity. Now, the reason I know all of this is because I was Desdemona. I was friends with some of the people on the off-topic subforum and had some notoriety slash recognition on that board, so I made a little mysterious account and sent vague and ominous message to random users and some people I recognized from off-topic, mainly to piggyback off the general fear of hackers, like 1x1x1x1. I would send a handful of messages every now and then. Eventually I started seeing people say, THOSE WHO GET A MESSAGE FROM DESDEMONA HAVE THEIR ACCOUNTS MYSTERIOUSLY DELETED! Despite the fact that all I ever did was send ominous PMs. I have to say, it was very fun watching the reactions and creepy rumors emerge from just harmless PMs, but I eventually stopped because I was ready to move on from Roblox. It is unknown if this was the real owner of the account, but I do believe that this was most likely MCP. Nintendo not responsible for our takedowns. As I've covered in previous videos, many Nintendo games of Roblox, most famously Brick Bronze, have been taken down due to copyright issues. While the story is actually a bit more complex than just Nintendo finding these games. In October of 2016, well-known Roblox game developer Tay Mastar emailed Nintendo to take down five Pokemon games on Roblox. All the games were taken down in 2016 to 2018. Though not mentioned in Tay Mastar's tweet, one of the games that got taken down in this wave was, of course, the fan favorite. Brick Bronze. But what if Nintendo didn't actually get games like Brick Bronze taken down, and it was actually Tame Mastar that did it? Well, that's not likely due to this tweet saying that the takedown was a direct request from the Pokemon company, and although they're not exactly Nintendo, they are closely associated enough so that you can't just admonish Nintendo of any blame. Price Floor Conspiracy The price floor is a minimum price set for selling items on Roblox, which was introduced in September of 2013. The price floor update was heavily criticized by the community upon its release. Prior to this update, the minimum price of t-shirts, shirts, and pants was one Robux and one ticket. The update raised the minimum price to 25 Robux and 300 tickets, although this was later lowered to 10 Robux and 100 tickets a week later following backlash. Three main reasons were cited in the blog posts announcing the updates. One, raising the quality of items in the catalog. Two, reward makers and sellers of clothing. And three, to incentivize non-paying users to buy Robux. Now, most people believe that this was, of course, more the third option than the first two, believing that this was a conspiracy by Roblox to get people to buy oh more Roblox. God, On April 13th, 2016, due to the removal of tickets, the price floor was lowered to two Robux for t-shirts and five Robux for shirts and pants. Roblox Browser the Roblox browser is what would originally open when the Roblox application was opened on your desktop. It was basically just the Roblox website, but in its own custom browser window. It was very basic, not having a back or forward button and no option for taps. It was discontinued in 2012, and the regular website opens now when you try to run the application. But Roblox Studio had its own browser in it for a while as well. Roblox Grooming Roblox is a site popular with children and thus has become a target for blah videos and perverts alike. These people can come in all shapes and sizes, mostly infiltrating communities associated with Roblox, mainly discords for Roblox YouTubers or games. I've even covered many Roblox groomers on my channel already. Mr. Obvious, Epic Critical, and Explode One are groomers who use their status in the Roblox community to lure in vulnerable kids. Roblox Sponsoring Scam Websites Roblox has never sponsored a scam website, but there was a screenshot spreading around of Roblox promoting a website that would give you free Robux. This is a fake tweet that was promoting a scam, so this is as close as Roblox will ever come to promoting a scam website. Banland actually existing. This is quite similar to Vault 8166 is real. This theory just claims that Banland is a real place Roblox users would go when they're terminated. It's not. 
Robloxian Lottery. The Robloxian Lottery was an event hosted by the Roblox staff and ran only once. Its only run was in July of 2007 and ran for one week with the final pot being 2.5k of Robux. It mirrored actual lotteries, with players being able to purchase tickets at 10 Robux apiece. Those Robux would then go into the pot for the lottery, making the payout even more expensive, but the chances of course would lower for each individual player. You could only buy one ticket, however, unlike real life. In the end, there were four winners who got from 2,500 Robux to only one single Robux. Got Milk Lawsuit. The Got Milk visor was a hat that went on sale in 2007. It had the slogan Got Milk on display, and the description read as such. Got Milk is an American advertising campaign encouraging the purchase of cow's milk, which was created by the advertising agency Goodby Silverstein and Partners for the California Milk Processor Board in 1993 and later licensed for the use by milk processors and dairy farmers. It has been running since October 1993. The campaign is credited with putting life back into milk sales nationwide after a 20 year slump. This entire hat description reads like it was an advertisement for the Got Milk campaign, but it was not. Rumor has it that Roblox was to be sued by Got Milk themselves, and so the hat was taken off sale soon after. It's now limited. Egg Hunt 2013 Secret Room In the official Egg Hunt 2013 game, if you went behind the waterfall, you could find a secret room buried deep beneath the caves, behind a secret wall. All that light in this room was the word answers written on the wall. Although it is speculated that extremely rare eggs would spawn in this room, there was no evidence of that happening. It was never uncovered what the room was for or what the writing meant, even to this day. JohnTex.png JohnTex.png refers to the textures of the unused 2.0 head and body, John Head and John Text. They are absolutely, of course, terrifying. From what I could find, this texture implies that the 2.0 body would have had replaceable textures, meaning it basically made way for shirts and pants on this model. Additionally, the John Head PNG has a hair texture that was not actually used in any of the promotional images. Roblox Beta Visors I think this entry refers to the unique Roblox beta visor that users in 2006 were supposedly forced to wear, probably as testing for the catalog that released in the following year. You can't find this beta hat today, so I assume it was taken down after beta was over. Condo Games on the front page I've discussed condo games before in my previous Iceberg video, but basically condo games are games where players can do certain inappropriate acts. These games are usually posted up for no more than a few hours, and then they get taken down by Roblox to die in obscurity. However, in 2020, condo games had a huge boom as creators figured out how to bot their games and get them popular. This led to some condo games actually making it onto the front page of Roblox before they were taken down. Unidentified Limited Use The Unidentified Limited, named Question Mark, is an item that was cancelled from Roblox. Supposedly, the item had three buyers one of them being Merely. The other two users were banned, and even though Merely is an official owner of the item and has not been banned yet, it does not show anywhere on his inventory whatsoever. When digging into the item, you can see that it has no name, and it is just called unnamed. Even though the item is listed as a hat, it does not show up anywhere on the player's head, and when the 2D image for the hat or the 3D model hat must be loaded, it will never actually load. Some people theorize that this was a trap used to ban those who use limited sniper bots since the two accounts that bought it were banned, and it's possible that Merely either never actually bought it and that was just a rumor, or that he didn't get banned because he's most likely a protected user. I don't know. Roblox Forum Archives As you know, the Roblox forums were removed permanently in June of 2017. However, user Frost actually created a forum archive which managed to archive a lot of forum activity on the website. This website has helped me a lot in gathering research for these videos, so I give Frost a huge thanks. DevX is a scam. DevX, or Developer Exchange, is how Roblox developers can exchange Robux for cash. DevX has fallen under criticism multiple times in the past for its exchange rates. Roblox keeps 65% of the profit when using DevX, which many users think is unfair. Additionally, users have had issues getting into DevX in the first place, with their games getting Roblox millions of plays, but still getting rejected from the DevX program because of minor infractions in the past. I myself don't think DevX is a scam, but let me know what you think in the comments. Hi Guys Derp Hi Guys Derp was one of the faces added in the April Fool's 2012 hacking incident. 
I won't go into too much detail because I actually already covered this in my History of Hackers video, but this face is much less known when the subject of the April Fool's hacking is brought up. Also, this face was never actually deleted and some people still actually have it. The Pit the Pit refers to a video based on a creepypasta based around a game that supposedly exists in 2006 and 2009. The place, rumored to be guarded by 1x1x1x1 himself, contained a wide open green grass ground with a big pit in front of the player. Upon jumping into the hole, the player would most likely fall out of the world. After falling, the game would suddenly exit itself and the player's account would be banned. The reason? You are not welcome here. The video? uploaded by user 4ZY1 was allegedly recorded in February of 2008. Normally I skip creepypasta and myth related content, but this one's pretty cool. The whole creepypasta is related to RFA2. They got me! Shadow Color This was a now deprecated feature that simply allowed you to change the color of shadows. Of course it was removed amongst the many other lighting features when the lighting engine was redone several years ago. Data Persistence Data persistence was a way for developers to save data across games which act similar to a data store. There was an incident with data persistence that caused some of the creators to lose some of their data in 2014. Otherwise, there's nothing significant about this entry. It was replaced by data store. 2005 Free Models 2005 Free Models are some of the very first models to ever exist, the first of these being the Ball 4X 4X4. Most of these models are off sale now, but there are actually a few you can still download to this day. Ambassador Program This was a program Roblox users could be a part of in 2009 to 2012. Basically, if you posted links to Roblox on other sites, you could get ticks. If you post three active links, you would get the badge. Each link gives two ticks. There was a cap of 50 active links, so you could get 100 ticks from this program alone. You'd also get a hat called the Well-Connected Gift to the Link Master, which could also be bought. In 2014, an admin said that all players who had the badge would have it removed from them since the program was retired. This was met with heavy criticism, but either way, that still ended up happening. QA QA was the second account to ever exist on Roblox, created in June 2004, but it was replaced by John Doe and assigned a new ID of 6. This account was used by David and Eric for quality assurance, which was what the name QA stands for and to troll around the forums on occasion. It is one of the only accounts to have a two-letter username. Kiwi is friends with four people, 111, a nanny moose, ice pools, and wired do. Kiwi's account was hacked on two separate occasions, one in April of 2016, where someone managed to gain access to the account and post to the forums, and a second in December of 2017, when an XSS vulnerability was abused to hack Kiwi's account. Roblox tried to defend the account by applying safeguards, however the Roblox client would not recognize QA as it only had two characters in it and the minimum amount of characters in a Roblox username were supposed to be at least three. So Roblox decided that the best they could do was just terminate the account. For whatever reason, however, the account's termination was lifted just last month along with toolboxes and QA is now back on the platform. Bytecode Basically, bytecode allowed users to input code outside of what Roblox gives you in Roblox Studio. This could be used to insert malicious scripts, but also many users just used it non-maliciously in their games. In August of 2012, however, bytecode was removed for security reasons, which ended up breaking some of the games that used it non-maliciously. Game.workspace destroy. This is a command that basically destroys the workspace in any Roblox game, breaking it completely. Now I don't know a lot about coding, but this might work, or did work at some point, and free models would apparently add that code as malicious code and corrupt places. Yorick was real. Yorick was an account created in 2006, used by admins to create an official Halloween event game. He was never actually seen online until the account was compromised in the 2012 April Fool's hacking, where the 2006 event place was made public and uncopylocked. Due to people seeing Yorick online again, they assumed that he was an actual player. But due to the fact that Yorick hasn't actually been seen online since 2006 and assumedly the April 2012 events, it's safe to say that there is no player that uses the Yorick account now at least. And fun fact, Yorick is actually named in reference to a character in William Shakespeare's Hamlet. The quote on the account's profile, Alas, poor Yorick is from the play itself. Madbad98 Madbad98, or Brittany, 
was a Roblox content creator that made content from around late 2009 to mid 2012. She had a career in exploiting as well, being seen exploiting around 2012 and having a hand in exploiting during the 2012 egg hunt. In June of 2012, her account was terminated, presumably for exploiting, and she hasn't uploaded to her channel since. Donald Trump's son plays Roblox. This is in reference to a rumor which spread around that the Roblox account Jumpy Turtle was Baron Trump, son of Donald Trump. It was spread around TikTok as a fact, with many people claiming they needed to save Baron. At first, the account teased as to whether or not it was actually Baron, with their bio saying, maybe, maybe not. But after getting too much attention, they confirmed that they were not actually Donald Trump's son, with their status reading, I'm not Trump's son, my account got leaked, stop friending me, I'm not Baron, and I thought you guys were here for my YouTube channel, I'm not Trumpet's son, stop sending death threats. Chances are people just had their sights set on the wrong guy, such as how rumors spread, but some people still believe that this is Baron, that he just claimed not to be so as to avoid the attention. We'll never really know. Real Free Robux Generators Back in early 2020, Tubers93, infamous for being responsible for multiple hackings on Roblox games, mainly Meep City, made a game called Free Rabax for Free Today that had you join a group and complete an obby and spin a wheel at the end of the obby to give you free Robux. Okay, obvious scam to waste your time or something. But no, this game would actually give you the Robux if you completed the obby. I think the game was just redistributing Robux gotten through questionable means, but I'm not sure. Apparently they went out to do this with multiple other games in the future. Roblox World's Biggest PSYOP I already discussed this on a smaller scale earlier in the video, but this entry is the sentiment that Roblox is a PSYOP designed to poison children's minds. This is a sentiment that is shown in an article by Thomas Jones, which states, The kids view inappropriate content on this webpage and it brings adverse effects on their psychology and behavior. Effective supervision of a kid's activities on this platform is necessary to overcome severe problems in the future. A quick measure protects your kids from catastrophic outcomes. It goes on to talk about how inappropriate Roblox games are changing the nature of children and causing them to be more aggressive and adopt sick and disgusting behavior. Roblox tracks down where you live. This refers to many instances and phenomenons where Roblox has indicated that they need the user's location, which thus leads to parts of the community believing that Roblox tracks down where you live, which is off-putting. There are two major instances of this happening. One, in 2018, Roblox introduced a feature where you could add friends based on your location, and it was called Add Nearby Friends on Mobile. The player would go to the Add Friends page, click Nearby, and then Roblox asks for your microphone permission. Roblox claims Roblox uses the microphone to find players around you. We may increase your audio volume. The device would send a loud noise that, assumedly, any other devices which had the app open would detect and automatically add the person as a friend. I don't know, it's kind of bizarre. It's also assumed that they already would know the player's location considering that it's people nearby the player, but considering the weird roundabout way they chose to implement the feature, it could honestly be either way. The same year, Roblox introduced a new category slash sorting system called Popular Near You, which implies that Roblox knows the player's location and takes other people's most recently played to put it into your player's system. It was later discussed in a dev forum that this is based off of your country, not your region or IP address, although some people were not 100% convinced. Greg Greg was the 24th user on Roblox, user ID 24, who joined sometime in 2006. He was one of the first players to have Builders Club and was banned later in the same year due to his account being compromised. In recent times, Greg has joined the Roblox hacker myths such as Dignity and John slash Jane Doe. It is said that he hacks random accounts and changes the passwords to lock users out, but this myth is easily explained just by kids forgetting their passwords. He was also accused of being the hacker behind the supposed March 24th, 2017 hack. You are sus because of rumors spread by the community. Roblox drove several people into schizophrenia. Roblox does not cause schizophrenia. This entry is hyperbole. However, it has been known to cause hallucinations in several people, as games can do that if you spend too long playing them. One user on 4chan shares their experience. I once stood up for three days straight playing Roblox when I was 14. I don't know what was wrong with me considering that it was a little kid's game. I remember trying to go back to sleep and my mind was just endless spirals of block patterns. It was so distressing and convoluted that when I woke up to take a piss, I was still dreaming about climbing this enormous block tower while I was pissing in the toilet. I myself have had hallucinatory experiences with Roblox. 
I remember after playing Roblox non-stop when I was younger, sometimes I would actually hear those blocky footsteps and jumps in the distance or around my house. I'm not joking. But that's just what happens when you play a game for too long. I'm certainly not schizophrenic. Hopefully. This is, of course, the most recent part of the iceberg. Not much new to say about this one since I just released it, but here you go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the final part of the long four part series covering the full Roblox iceberg. If you haven't seen the other three parts, you can watch them after this video. It doesn't really make much of a difference. If you have seen the other parts, well, you know what we're in for today. Part four of the iceberg is filled with weird and bizarre entries, a lot of which are just plain made up or don't have a lot of evidence for them, but that's for us to find out in the video. So without further ado, let's just start the video. But not before I tell you about Honey Game. Hey, yo, Honey Game, is that the cool? Honey Game is a website and application that basically lets you use your internet connection to earn money passively. Essentially, Honey Game helps gather bits of data from the internet to give it to various companies and businesses. And in exchange, you get paid without having to do anything except for just run the app. You can maximize your earnings by connecting multiple devices and running content delivery. Additionally, you can refer others to the service and you gain 10% commission from them. Honey Game is completely safe and legit. Many people have posted proof of payment on the internet and the app doesn't collect any of your data or anything like that. So if you'd like to earn a bit of extra money to help buy Robux every month instead of just stealing your mom's credit card, sign up for Honey Game today using my special link to get your first $5 immediately. It's up for download for Windows, Mac OS, and Android devices. Okay, now we're gonna start the video. Dynablox build leaked. This is another entry related to the Roblox footage archives, but this one is a bit interesting. The video shows someone logging into a supposedly leaked build of Dynablox with strange ambient music playing in the background. The video's description had a username and password and a link that supposedly led to the leaked build, but it doesn't work now, and most likely never did. Again, this entry is ARG stuff, unfortunately. A lot of the entries on these next few layers are, but this one was at least interesting. People Browser. The People Browser was a page on Roblox that had just a list of players. You could search for specific players or search terms, to which you would get every player slash group with that term in their name or bio. This browser caused a lot of issues, however. It was a page that you could just scroll down infinitely and see the names of players who just happened to be on these pages. This meant that spam bots could just easily scroll through these pages and send messages to all the players on each page. Roblox changed this to the Player Browser, where you had to at least search names to get lists of players, which did help reduce the spam a bit. Beat the Lions Beat the Lions was another minigame from 2005. In the game, the player probably had to do something along the lines of run away from slash defeat lions. We don't have much to go off besides this extremely low res picture, which honestly doesn't have anything of discernible quality, and the uh, unfortunate title of, of course, Beat the Lions. Mario 64 Connections one of the songs used on Roblox was Mario 64's bob -omb Battle. This song became an unofficial part of Roblox's soundtrack, being used in various games and especially Roblox blooper videos. You don't see it used now much though, most likely because copyright caught up to Roblox on this one. Build Mode Build Mode is a now removed feature on Roblox that allows players to use tools to build a game as they were playing rather than make it in Roblox Studio and then play it afterwards and such. This mode used the same tools as Welcome to Roblox Building and it was used as a sort of quick and easy way to make games without scripting and learning Roblox Studio. This feature was quietly removed in December of 2016. Roblox CP Games slash Soundtracks Unfortunately, in Roblox's history, there has been multiple instances of cheese pizza being on the site. We've talked about it being posted to the forums before, but it has, apparently, shown up in games as well. One user states that at some point there was a condo game with a link in the description that led to a website with, well, yeah. As for soundtracks, I honestly cannot confirm that this was ever a thing, but I really can't deny it either. 
it's not that hard to bypass audio on Roblox and there are audios of CP out there on the internet. So the chance that CP was used for a soundtrack in some screwed up Roblox games before is not impossibly low. Devo Lawsuit In September of 2009, Roblox released a hat for 50 ticks simply called Devo. It was made based off of the hats that the band of the same name would wear. The hat was available for only a few days before Roblox was contacted by Devo's legal team and told to take it down. For whatever reason, Roblox didn't ask permission to make this a hat. Anyways, Roblox decided to take the hat off sale and rename it to Impossible to Obtain Red Wedding Cake Hat, which was enough for them to avoid a major lawsuit. Roblox Scam Website Kidnapping Roblox scam websites are very common. I'm sure most of us know what they are. They come in plenty of different shapes and sizes, some that may trick the player into sending personal details such as, obviously, their credit card info or their parents' credit card info, their phone name, and their address. It is possible that someone behind one of these websites used their information to kidnap an unsuspecting child although there have never actually been any reports of kidnappings related to Roblox scam websites, and it's more likely that this was just a rumor. Roblox monitored by China China and video games have a weird relationship. China heavily monitors media, especially media directed towards children. That being said, China's huge, so many video game companies would love to tap into that market. Roblox and China are tied together, with Roblox having a Chinese-only version that is, well, Pretty strict. But beyond that, Roblox is also partnered with the Tencent Corporation, which the higher ups have direct ties to the Chinese government. This entry states that due to this partnership, the Chinese government can and does monitor the site independently. It's hard to know if this is all true, but this entry does have some credence to it, as someone did get banned for posting about their concentration camps with this eloquent argument China has concentration camp. Eric Castle never died. This is just the conspiracy that Eric Castle faked his death for whatever reason. I honestly can't even think of a good reason as to why he would. He didn't. He really did die, and this entry is a bit disrespectful if anything, but whatever. r slash go commit die created to bring new users to Roblox. If you don't know, r slash go commit die is a very popular subreddit dedicated to funny Roblox screenshots. It is extremely popular and was responsible for memes like the Despacito Spider. This entry is the theory that Go Commit Die was created for the sole purpose of bringing more players to Roblox, which I doubt. It did however do something if it wasn't on purpose. It made Roblox funny again, making it relevant to an entire group of people who relegated it to just being a dumb kids game and get again to play the game. I know this is true because I, and more importantly my friends, were in that group of people who began to play Roblox again, mostly ironically, because of the memes from this subreddit. r slash go commit die has also been the center of a lot of controversy due to its mods and their inherent desire to share their opinions on the website for some reason, but that's a story for another time. Implicit Engine This was one of the earliest physics engines in Roblox, being created by David Bazooki himself in 2004. It was rather simplistic in its design, and it has been replaced by a few other engines since. BC only items. Believe it or not, there were a few items that were made BC only, such as, of course, the hard hat, the BC business tie, and the hungry dino hat. These BC only restrictions have now been replaced with premium only items. I'm really not sure why this is so low on the iceberg. Actual UAE ban reason. As I've covered in the last iceberg video, Roblox is banned in the UAE. The reason provided is that it is harmful to children slash not educational, among other things. Apparently there was a deeper reason it was banned, however, and it's possible that it may have been tied to the Blue Whale game. The Blue Whale game was a trend, I guess, where people would get teenagers to participate in a series of challenges that got more and more severe until it led to the challengers uh, suit. If they refused, the person who initiated the game would often grab their IP through links and threaten them. Its reputation became way bigger than it actually was, but there was a rumor that the UAE banned Roblox because of the Blue Whale game being played through Roblox. I doubt this is the real reason, due to Roblox's heavy chat filters. However, it's always possible to move conversations like that to Discord or other third-party apps, so you never know. Either way, fear of the Blue Whale game may have been the actual reason that UAE banned Roblox, but we may never really know. Roblox the indoctrination cults. 
We've talked about jihadi groups on Roblox, but sadly a much more prevalent group on the platform is that which supports neo Muslim. It's a bit hard to distinguish who is doing these things for real and who is just a group of edgy teens, but there 100% are real groups who aim to indoctrinate children into Muslim. Using Sunni imagery and roleplay to push their agendas. There's also a large scene on Roblox, which is just as horrific, if not worse. Roblox 2. Roblox 2 is pretty much exactly what you think it is. It's a joke, a weird rumor, and a few ripoff games. The most interesting things that I could find was a r slash Roblox 2 subreddit, which was annexed by the Jaden Gang. I'm not sure what the Jaden Gang is, but I assume they just name sniped Roblox 2 or at least did a rather weak rate of the subreddit. Otherwise, there are probably some fake games claiming to be Roblox 2, but there will, most likely, never be a real second Roblox. Nipropa Jokes Maniacs have Roblox accounts. If you don't remember from the last video, the Nipropa Jokes murderers were a duo of Russian murderers who were responsible for a string of murders that they actually recorded. This entry claims that the Maniacs had Roblox accounts, and that Roblox possibly had a hand in leading them to commit the atrocities they did. Obviously that's most likely not true. They may have had Roblox accounts, who knows, but clearly Roblox did not drive them to do any of what they did. In fact, I have been told that this entry was just meant to tie into RFA, which never got the chance to be fully realized. Sonic Eclipse Sonic Eclipse was a Roblox Sonic fan game that ended up getting pretty popular. In 2020, however, the creator, Dr. Rofatnik, was exposed for racism and homophobia. Of course. Soon after, he was taken off the project, however, and it continues on without him. Use Strategy to Win Use Strategy to Win, like Beat the Lions, was another Roblox minigame. From what we know, this was some attempt to mimic a strategy game. The game was released around the same time as Beat the Lions. Nothing else was known about it besides this image and a link to an extremely old version of the Roblox website with the game's name on the leaderboard. Robox The Robox was an April Fool's joke for 2019. The Robox was intended to be a gaming console used exclusively for Roblox. Of course, it was just a joke. It never sold itself as anything but one. They did release a Robox hat for free onto the platform though, so it wasn't all for nothing. One cool thing that came out of this was the Nexus Avenger making an actual Robox PC case, although you can't actually buy one for yourself, which is a little disappointing. User ID 4 The question of who User ID 4 is is a complicated one that I don't have the full answer to. Searching it now, the user under ID 4 is banned. The only thing that is known is that at some point the ID was eric.castle. And if you look into the inspect element for ID 4 now, you will see the ID, the user ID is just The leading theory is that user ID 4 was indeed Eric Castle and the other user, user 16 was simply named, you know, that word. This user was created to test Roblox's name moderation or was just a user whose name was just inappropriate. So it was promptly banned and switched IDs with Eric.Castle, who now sits at ID 16. Roblox Black Market The Roblox Black Market is a place or several places on the internet where you can buy and sell Robux, limiteds, and even accounts. These are often on forums or Discord servers, and they're done completely third party and involve spending real money rather than Robux. These are only black markets because buying and selling things with real money is against Roblox TOS, and obviously sometimes they actually do sell illegally obtained accounts. It's not too uncommon to find password guest accounts on sale at these markets. Roblox HQ Child Workers. <sighs> I don't know if this entry is a joke, or a fair related, or was meant to be taken seriously. I'm leaning towards the first. This entry was apparently purged from the internet, which would explain how you can't find anything about this online. I don't know, maybe Roblox does use child workers at their HQ, maybe using young aspiring programmers for free labor. I just want to say I really don't think this is real. It's a joke. Don't take me seriously. Roblox in Africa The Roblox community in Africa is, as far as I can tell, pretty non-existent. I mean, if you live in Africa and have a computer with access to the internet, you can play Roblox, but it appears that there hasn't been any major rise in popularity for Roblox in Africa yet, although that certainly may be a possibility for the future. 
Roblox's true purpose. I think this entry relates back to the previous entries about Roblox being a PSYOP and being used to control the population a la MKUltra. Roblox's stated purpose is, of course, to be a fun platform for players of all ages to play and develop games and maybe make some friends along the way. But could it ever really be that simple? Of course, Roblox's true purpose may be much more sinister. Or so the people making this iceberg would like to think. Spasmotron vs Wimpotron 2 this was Roblox's first minigame, created on July 31st, 2004 by David Bazuki. It starred two contraptions, Spasmotron and Wimpotron. These two machines would have controller variables put into them, which allowed them to be controlled by players, and they would fight to the death. Simple as that. Falling off the edge. When you fall off the edge in a Roblox game, you die, right? Well, when you normally die in a Roblox game, you just break apart and there's a death sound. But if you fall off the edge, you simply disappear with no death sound. It's a bit bizarre when you think about it. It's unknown as to why that is and if there's something more to this phenomenon that occurs when you fall off the edge, but it's probably just to save time as there's no need to break apart when you're down that low. There is no lag. This entry is most likely trying to tell you. That lag that you have in every game where like there's the characters are rubber banding and they aren't where they look like they are, it's fake. There's no real lag. Roblox just artificially adds the delay themselves. But uh, of course that's not true. I mean, every online connection must involve lag of some sort, so this is most likely just a joke entry, which there are a lot of following this one. Robert Locks. Oh, speak of the devil. Robert Locks is just another joke entry. A nickname for Robert is Rob. Roblox. Roblox. Yeah, I think that this joke is really all there is to this one. Roblox Windows 10 app censored. Windows 10 has its own app for Roblox, which comes with its own website interface. It is possible that the Windows app is somehow censoring some of the games, but that just doesn't seem to be true from anyone who actually played the Windows 10 app. I think this is just another icebergism. Every user has been PG'd. This entry is the theory that every user's accounts, including yours and mine, have been password guessed before by bots, and that that data is just lying dormant somewhere but they aren't used because either these accounts have two-step verification, which you should have, or that there's just no use in hijacking every single PG accounts. I know this entry is most likely a joke, but when you think about it, I mean, there really could be an insane amount of brute force bots being used by millions of different people. So the chances that yours, mine's, your grandmother's passwords has been guessed start to not be that slim anymore. And have you ever gotten signed out of your account for no reason? Yeah, you may have just been PG'd, and all that data is sitting on someone's computer somewhere. So that's why we're sponsored by Dash. Every Roblox game is connected to each other, 2006 through 2008. The only thing that I can imagine that goes with this entry is the game called Mini Robloxia by R92, which connects many of the old and notable worlds slash games from the older era of Roblox. Examples being Sword Fight on the Heights, Rocket Arena, Capture the Flag, Paintball, Roblox HQ, Thrillville, etc. From 2006 to 2008, there were significantly less games being made and only a small handful of popular games, so it was easy for them to be connected like this. And who knows, maybe there was some sort of lore that connects all these games that was intended. I don't know. I've seen connections. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it! 96% of users are bots. This entry just claims that 96% of all users on the platform are bots. According to the new user statistics, there are around 2.5 billion accounts on Roblox. Now, according to this article by Brian Dean, there are 199 million active users a month. So if we compare that to the 96% statistic, that means that either at least 99 million of these active users are bots, which to be fair, I don't know what counts as being an active user in this study, and I'm not even sure if bots can be active, or clearly something doesn't add up. No, no, no. I severely doubt that 90% of users are bots. It's impossible to know just how many users are bots, but the leading theory that I've seen around is that 11% you know, of users are bots, which would leave around 275 million botted accounts, which is honestly still an insane number, but it's a little bit more realistic. Roblox game card secret messages. I'm not really 100% sure what this could be referring to. 
It's possible that there were some sort of secret messages on the Robux gift cards you can buy, but I'm not sure. Additionally, it could be referring to the Robux GameStop card item, which is my best guess. On the back of the card is some text and a barcode at the bottom. The text is far too compressed to be deciphered, the only thing being able to be made out being of course the compressed Robux logo, and the barcode isn't able to be scanned either. The text looks to literally just be the terms and conditions copied over, but the barcode isn't seen anywhere on its real life counterpart, and it's possible the text could say something different. Additionally, using the card in-game gives you access to one of a few gears such as a chessboard, a tic-tac-toe board, and a DS. It's also possible that doing something special with these games can yield some sort of secret message. We're not sure yet, so if you have any information, please comment down below or message me on Discord. Horror Music The classic horror music used in many classic Roblox games is actually audio Halloween 2, slowed down and then repeated with some ambient effects in the background. Despite being so simple, this song was very effective in scaring millions of children, not excluding me. The Void This is the final layer to the iceberg. Huge warning that this layer covers a lot of illegal and disturbing content, even though most of it isn't really grounded in any kind of reality. Still, you've been warned. Nadragaytook.gif and Little Lily now, depending on who you ask, nidrugaytook.gif, which is just how I'm going to pronounce it, and Little Lily could mean different things. One user on Reddit explains, nidrugaytook.gif is meant to be a GIF uploaded onto the Roblox website through a travel network which can upload moving images. The reason why this is so low is due to the fact that no moving image is allowed on Roblox, meaning that this GIF is literally illegal in Roblox terms. And Little Lily, I don't know. I heard from some claims that Little Lily was nicknamed due to an incident in one of those roleplay games. The incident says it ends with a dark ending, which means anything. Not sure though. However, I believe this explanation by a user on 4chan to be at least a bit more accurate. The drug Atuk.gif and Little Lily were both connected to each other. These files were found inside a 2012 Roblox client. I have barely any information about these files. The only theory that I have heard is that these files are actually named to Buddy Show sites. Now for the Little Lily, I have no clue what that could be referring to, but nedrogaytook.gif gets interesting when you reverse it, and it becomes Cutie Garden. Now if you don't know what that website is, do not look it up. It involves borderline illegal uh, cheese pizza content, that's all I'll say. It's possible that these files were some sort of attempt to hide the uh, CP in the code or client of the game. Probably nothing real, however. Roblox 3030303 Roblox 3030303 was a nine-year-old girl who ran a YouTube channel slash web show, The Aubrey and Brianna Show. One day in 2015, she decided to make a post on the OT forums promoting her channel. This supposedly led to her getting droves of hate from OTers and even getting DDoSed and having her IP leaked. This led to her making claims alluding to suicide, which were most likely never followed through, thankfully. This incident caused multiple people to move away from OT, rightfully so. This whole thread was wiped, so I'm not 100% sure if it was real, but if this did happen, it's pretty messed up. Project Andrealphus This entry was supposed to be connected to RFA. Project Andrealphus was a creepypasta that was supposed to involve a project to build a super teleporter, whatever that means. This whole thing was scrapped, however, so this entry basically means nothing. 1x1x1x1 actually spotted. Now, I know that this entry was intended to be RFA related. The picture associated with this entry is clearly related to RFA, but that doesn't mean that there haven't been other claims of people seeing 1x1x1x1. Many people claim to have seen 1x1x1x1 in games around 2006 to 2007, mainly Shedletsky games, which were probably real due to 1x1x1x1 being Shedletsky's test account. However, in 2011, the one, the only Roblox posted a video of 1x1x1x1 being spotted in sword fights on the heights and even chatting with the man. Since then, more and more sightings continued to happen throughout the following years, many of which weren't really that convincing. It's likely that these videos were either hoaxes or just hackers pretending to be 1x1x1x1, but again, it's impossible to truly know. Roblox CEO is one of the elites. This entry is simply the theory that David Bazuki is one of the elite members of society who control the US and maybe the world's governments in some way. I don't know, maybe he even had some Epstein connections if you know what I'm saying. But in all seriousness, 
David is worth billions of dollars. So if anyone is a candidate for being a part of the elite, I mean, yeah, he's a strong runner. That being said, of course, there's no proof I could find that he would be, so I don't want to make any brash accusations. Mr. Doombringer lied. If you know about 1x1x1x1, you know about Mr. Doombringer's post explaining his origins and how the hacker isn't actually real. While many people in the forums believe that the post by Mr. Doombringer was a lie meant to cover up 1x1x1x1's true origins, one poster on the forums claimed to be 1x1x1x1 posting, you think, think you, you know, know the true story, story of me? me? Well, well, the, the story, story Mr. Drimbringer told was fake. 1x1x1x1, or the group, or me, has existed since Roblox had its inception. We were a group of hackers designed to hack Roblox, and John tried to cover up the horrible things we'd done by posting that story. Everybody believed it until the recent hackings by 128x128, 404x404, and myself. You're all being tricked. Of course, this post was a hoax and wasn't taken seriously, but it does hit on the fact that A, Mr. Doombringer made up the story to cover up the true 1x1x1x1, and B, 1x1x1x1 was a group of hackers, rather than a single hacker, which actually is rather plausible, but who knows. 2006 Starter Places There are many different versions of the starter place you could get in 2006. First, it was a blue table with a base plate and a pink bed. Later on, that base plate was changed to be green, then it was changed to being the doll place. Finally, it was changed to a large room with two base plates and a wooden floor sign saying free bricks. In current Roblox, the textures don't even load. Cult groups. Similar to Nazi propaganda groups, Roblox is host to many cult groups. They have active groups for Muslim, which isn't necessarily a cult, but you know. It also has the Divine Sister group, which I already discussed, which has very cult-like behavior and probably has a whole underbelly of cult groups that I can't even find. I have zero doubt that these cult groups are on the platform because Roblox sucks at taking down these dangerous groups. 2014 Future Prediction Thread In 2014, a thread was created in which the creator asked when people believed the US would collapse. The greatest minds from Roblox gathered to make their predictions, with the average falling seemingly at around 20 years from then. So, if the US collapses in the 2030s, Remember this videos, guys. Content deleted. If you don't know, content deleted is a message that shows up in place names, place descriptions, users, or forum posts when the original content of the page slash place is, well, deleted. It's become a bit of a meme nowadays. I assume that this entry was a play on the meme, like a more serious entry got deleted or something, but maybe this was it, so I'm just gonna pretend. Okay, I'm moving on. Area 51 map was an actual recreation. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It's the theory that the Survive the Killers in Area 51 map was based off of the actual Area 51. Just, I severely doubt it. But to be fair, it's not like anyone can confirm or deny this unless they're, you know, high enough clearance, I guess. I love you. Adonis Admin is a server moderation tool that can be installed in various Roblox games to make the entire moderation process much easier. It became very popular, being used in games from One Piece Golden Age to Iron Man Simulator. What people didn't know was that this management system held a dark secret. An easter egg, if you will. If you typed the command, question mark, I love you, in a game with a Donis admin, something would happen. The screen would turn black, and an image of a person in a dark closet wearing a clown mask would appear on the screen. Many people thought this was an official Roblox command, but it was, in fact, attached to a Donis admin. It is unknown as to why the command was put there, but one can only assume it was just to scare people. Obama funny. Obama funny is when Obama funny. content purged. Content purged can only be assumed to be what happens to a subject when Roblox really doesn't want it to be seen online. It's possible that any mention of these subjects gets purged if mentioned anywhere in Roblox, such as Cuban iPad, which you can barely find any reference to on the site. Lost Clients These are various versions of the Roblox client that are completely lost to time, unavailable for download anywhere. Due to efforts of the community, many official clients have actually been found, uh, the most recent finding being the March 2007 client, but any clients before that, meaning 2003 to 2006, are completely lost with only screenshots and gameplay videos being available. 
I've talked about many lost clients before on these types of videos. And since it's lost, you know what that means. Say it with me. Lost, lost Media, media. Iceberg. Iceberg. Ghosts. There have been many, many reports from players of ghosts, some of which have been proven to be either hoaxes or easter eggs created by the game developers. But this entry refers to actual, real ghosts that haunt Roblox games. With this entry, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the Melvin myth. If you don't know, Melvin was a frequent Roblox player who died due to cancer, and now he haunts Roblox using an ethereal version of the shaggy hair, teleporting players to his haunted games and like killing them or something. Catch me rotten, <laughs> well, I believe the Melvin myth is probably just that, a myth. I don't know. The idea of ghosts on the internet is not new, and it's not that far-fetched, if ghosts exist at all. So if internet ghosts do exist, it would be very likely that they would find their way onto one of the largest internet platforms on the world, Roblox, and they could haunt the platform, so who knows. Cursed House The Cursed House is a game made by Game Hero for the Spooky Building Contest in 2007. The game won the most horrifying category. The game is pretty basic. You walk around a haunted house, get scared. The game was pretty scary for the time, having some now pretty archaic scares, but it managed to be creepy in its own right now due to the creepiness of walking around an empty Roblox map all alone. The Ultimate Game in Ultimate.RBLX The Ultimate Game was supposedly a Roblox game that contained every asset known to Roblox, even some that didn't exist yet. Apparently only Roblox admins and those high up had access to this game. Ultimate.RBXL is the file for said Ultimate Game. It is said that the creators of this file went cuckoo bananas and game ended oh themselves. God. Because what was contained in the files was too much for the internet to handle. None of this is real, however. It's all part of the RFA mythos. Roblox steals your credit card. You know how you have to put in your credit slash debit card information when you're buying Robux or premium on Roblox? Well, some people have claimed that the website actually steals that information and possibly sells it off or uses it themselves. One user I talked with talks about how she used her mom's credit card on Roblox and only a few days later, fraudulent purchases began to show up on the card. Apparently the card hadn't been used for anything suspicious within months of the purchase besides buying Robux. This has apparently even happened to a few of her friends. So what do you guys think? When you buy Robux, are you truly secure? Front page porn game hack. In 2016, an NSFW game akin to that of a condo game was likely botted to appear on Roblox's front page. The game's thumbnail featured a woman's full-on no-no square exposed completely. It stayed up for a little while until Roblox jumped on the situation and probably scarred a lot of kids. Click This Version 2 Supposedly, Click This Version 2 was something that was some sort of link spammed on the forums. When clicked, it would direct to a video of, well, Something bad. One 4chan user puts it best as equating it to man shitting on a baby tear shit. Chances are this is entirely fake, however, since click this version 1 meant nothing. GoBlox actual version. Supposedly, the real version of GoBlox was a bizarre deformation of what we know today as Roblox. Those who played it reported having adverse reactions to it, such as headaches and nausea. It was actually revealed that this version of GoBlox was an early experiment, attempting mind control through video games. This version of GoBlox has been completely wiped from the internet. Or has it? Iceberg Origins Here is a surprise entry for you guys. What are the origins of this very iceberg? With all these crazy entries, I'm sure you are dying to know just who came up with this. Well, there isn't really any one person behind this iceberg. You see, this iceberg originates on 4chan. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, okay. But a user posted it to 4chan and a thread was created to add different entries and multiple people ended up contributing. I don't know who was the first person to create the iceberg and I don't know who all contributed because the thread has lost a time. But there are a few familiar faces. Of course, most of you know that the creator of the Roblox footage archives had a large hand in creating the iceberg. At this point, he was just starting his RFA ARG and he thought the iceberg would be a great opportunity to plug his videos, basically. And I think it would have been, but unfortunately the project was, of course, retired soon after, and all the mysticism surrounding it 
disappeared. So all these entries now only serve to clutter the iceberg. But yeah, the iceberg was more of a gathering of the community, with several revisions and new versions propping up over the months since its origin. Heck, even I added some things to the iceberg in order to hopefully make it a little bit more entertaining for you guys. But that is the full Roblox iceberg explained. Huge thanks to you guys for sticking through the series and helping me out as we went along. Follow my Twitter, Patreon, and second channel for more content. This whole video series has been a huge adventure and I thank every single one of you for joining me on this journey. Now in the previous upload of this video, I used a song for the credits that got me copyright struck, so this time, well, you know what they say. When in doubt, do it yourself. Thanks guys, I'll see you later. You know, it got copyrighted the last video, couldn't do anything about that, so I'm gonna have to take things into my own hand this time. Uh, which is fine, because I have the pipes for this. And this isn't even gonna get copyright struck, because this is my voice. So let's do this. I know, I know I've let you down. I've been a fool to myself. I thought that I could live for no one else. But now, through all the hurt and pain, it's time for me to respect the ones who love me more than anything. So with sadness in my heart, I feel the best thing I could do is end it all and leave forever. What's done is done, it feels so bad. What once was happy, now is sad. I'll never love again, my world is ending. I wish that I could turn back time. Cause now the guilt is all mine. Can't live without the trust from those you love. I know. You can't forget the past You can't forget love and pride Because of that, it's killing me inside Woo! It all uh, uh, returns uh, to uh, Tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. It all returns to nothing. I just keep letting me down, letting me down, letting me down. In my heart of hearts, I know that I can never love again. I've lost everything. the past we can't forget love and pride because of that it's killing me inside Woo! it all uh, uh, returns uh, uh, to Tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. It all uh, uh, returns uh, uh, to me. I just keep letting me down, letting me down, letting me down. It all uh, uh, returns uh, uh, to me. Uh, I just keep tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down.